Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. We go to the Oak Garcia household, where all of your favorite characters are, <laughs> are, are hanging out in the lo- living room. Then we go to the kitchen, and while Henry is doing abominable things to popcorn, Lark and Sparrow walk in. Hey, my beautiful boys, how you, how's it going? You guys ready to see this Minion movie? Sparrow says, Father, I know, we know, that things have been different for some time, and that since we've returned, Lark has been, shall we say, sullen. But Lark, I believe you have an apology for Father. Oh, Lark, that's so sweet. You don't need to apologize for anything, buddy. Lark comes in for an embrace, and he says, I really do need to apologize, Father. I am sorry. Sorry for what, bud? For this. And in that moment, you feel a blade enter your back between your shoulder blades. (gasps) A knife. It's not a very deep wound, but it hurts, and you feel it go all the way in. And he steps away from you, and he just shakes his head, and he goes, I'm so sorry, Father. As you look into his eyes, you remember all the horrible things that brought you to this moment. You remember coming to the Forgotten Realms and you being the first person to cast a spell to entangle a red cloak that he defeated. You remember using your Jezball skills to build walls of fire and stone around each other. You remember using the power of your mind and your colon to completely immolate (laughs) David Boreanaz, even as he was screaming that all he had ever wanted was for the Lord of Chaos to spill the blood of the unsung hero. And as you think about that, you remember that as the door slammed on Willie Stampler, he had cast the message spell. Oh, shit. shit. And in this moment, you realize, as Lark mouths it in front of you, what that message was. Henry Oak is the unsung hero. And the Lord of Chaos has just spilled his blood. Oh, shit. And suddenly you and your two children find yourselves racked with convulsions as you all begin to vomit up a stream of black oh and my gray God. static uh, type oh God. stuff. Do we see it in the that, living room? Like, are we? Yes, everyone in the living room, everyone outside can yeah, hear it as, as a deep, bassy rumble actually begins to be heard all across the planet. After what feels like forever, you stop heaving up this black bile substance and it begins to form into a cloud and it escapes out the nearest open window. I stagger to my feet. I check on my voice. Are you guys all right? Are you okay? You hear the smash of glass outside. You hear uh, car alarms blaring. Oh, God. I pick up my two boys and I run out the door. And as you head out into the front yard, you look up and you see what was the small cloud of static beginning to grow larger and larger in the sky. And it begins to encircle the earth. The sky is turning this horrible, black, staticky color. And you know in this moment that the doodler has returned. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast. Or a daddy's podcast. <laughs> It's not about daddies. <laughs> no, it is about it daddies. It is about daddies, but daddies isn't what you think it is. Oh, Open yeah. your mind. This is a Dungeons and Dragons podcast that tells the story of the four grandchildren of Daryl, Henry, Glenn, and Ron on a quest to find their lost dads in a world forever changed by the events of season one. My name is Freddie Wong, and I play cool teen. I get to reveal my teen name, <gasps> Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Swift loves anime, loves survival. Taylor's rad fact is he doesn't have a backpack. He has a go bag. He keeps everything in his like school backpack. He calls it his go bag, just in case. This is a normal school backpack, or it's just a normal school backpack. What's what's Taylor got in his go bag? It's got a lot of paracord (laughs) and one of those crinkly blankets, one of those crinkly survival blankets. And like a very, very loud whistle, because if you're ever out in the middle of nowhere, it does you no good to shout. But if you want to you know, auditorily get attention of someone, the whistle is the best way of doing it. And Taylor knows all of this. Hey, everybody. My name is Matthew Arnold. I play Lincoln Lee Wilson, schooled at home soccer kid whose voice is going to drop soon. Don't worry about it. It will. <laughs> Little, I guess, rad fact about Lincoln here is that he is a year older than everybody because he was homeschooled. But he loved soccer so much and he was tired of playing soccer by himself. He finally convinced his overbearing dad, Grant, to let him go to a normal high school so he could join the soccer team. But it was a year behind everybody. So he's a year older than everybody. He's a year older, a year wiser. How did he play soccer by himself? In the backyard, you know, a lot of a lot of 
helmets, a lot of safety equipment, very, you know, taken care of. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> mostly just wore equipment. Wait, wait. He wore a helmet. I, okay, I do that. Uh, two quick rad facts was also that Lincoln fell in love with FIFA first. Like, he didn't know it was a sport. He just played the video game with Grant all the time and played FIFA. And then when he found out there's a real world of soccer, he got really into soccer. He's like, wait, this is the real version of this Who's video game? like Blitzball from Final Fantasy <laughs> yes. X to him. Yes. Wait, Dad, you're telling me that this one's real, though? Super Mario Strikers is a documentary? Because <laughs> Grant, his dad, is not quite a pro gamer, but, you know, he was a millennial. He plays video games, so mm. that's how they did a lot Grant of was not a millennial. Grant was a Zoomer. Zoomer. Grant was a Zoomer. Oh, I mean, Zoomers yeah, don't Zoomer, play video Zoomer's games. Zoomers play video games, video games too, bad. Games. Zoomers yeah. play video games more As than a millennial? <laughs> I, I will not stand for this erasure of I, our generation. I want our generation to be erased. <laughs> <laughs> Thanos, get on it. Hey, everyone, I'm Will Campos, and I play Normal Oak, a per... <laughs> I just love that your name's Normal. A perky, peppy, chipper, cheery, school spirit mascot kid. Normal oh. is the school mascot of Teen High. I don't know what the name of this high school is. Sandy High School. Sandy High School. Teen, teen, high, school. teen, teen high, high, Will. <laughs> it's the same high school that we did. The, the kids call it Teen High. Hear me out. What if their mascot is the teen? The teen. <laughs> so what is your costume then? Just I a larger teen? Your costume larger teen. teenager. <laughs> And none, no kid likes your teen. You're okay, like, That's so not he teen. plays Teeny the Teen, and <laughs> oh uh, there's God. no way I am letting our mascot just no, be the a doodlers. Teen. No, it's great. No, it's it's too late. Sorry. <laughs> This is a new okay, season. We have teen, new canon. He's a fucking teen now. A teen means something else. No, it's Beth. Like, no, Beth. You're not the mascot. If you could say something, makes us laugh harder. You're not the mascot character. Will, put this out in the world. You yes am this. I can't We're believe that. You know what? You're right. This. You're right. I, I spoke out of turn. <laughs> and, uh, All right. So, yeah. Normal is... Uh, I hate it too, Beth. Don't worry. <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> I hate it so much. I'm losing so much. It's like, I don't like rad fact. I'm not a big fan of rad fact. And then teeny the teen. I guess I can get used to. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beth May, and I play Terry Marlowe, a once soft-spoken daydreamer rebelling into a goth punk seeker of darkness who is not like other girls after meeting her new stepdad, Terry Steven Stampler. <laughs> that's right. Her mom's with a dude that's also called Terry. Ugh. Instead of reverting to her full name, Teresa, she decides to embrace her inner demons, and she becomes Scary Marlowe. And that's the longest intro <laughs> that it will be. It, it's going to be like super like snappy and quick for the rest of the season. Hi, I'm Anthony Birch. What uh, up, Teach? Oh! Oh! If Anthony's 15 minutes late to the podcast record, we don't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm still the daddy master. Yeah, you're still our daddy. I'm not a ratty master. That sucks. No. Yeah. I guess the rad fact for this week is going to be, though this is still a uh, Dungeons and Dragons podcast, I've adjusted some mechanics and farted around with some stuff, trying to get just kind of a different vibe. So if you hear anything that feels Feels like that's absolutely not a DD mechanic. Give it time. If this sucks, I'll change it. Uh, and if it's cool, then I knew better and you can shut up. Let's go! do it. So last season on Dungeons and Daddies ended with the summoning of an eldritch chaos god known as the Doodler. Larkin Sparrow Oak uh, summoned him by drawing the blood of the unsung hero, their father, Henry. The three Oak boys vomited out a bunch of static that went into the sky, changed the sky in some weird way. Everything seemed like it was going to go very bad, like the world was going to end. And that's where we ended our previous season. And now we will open like this. 25 years later. The black sun burns angrily in a crimson sky. Did Anthony write some of this oh out? My oh my shit. I'm so excited. Yo, hold on. Let the me, black let me, sun? On, Fucking hell my, yeah. I'm there, baby. I can feel it. I just, I just need to get like... <laughs> get closer to the edge? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The black sun burns angrily in the crimson sky. You can see thin, shallow grooves fading into view, all pointing away from the sun. They look like somebody dragged a knife across the firmament over and over again, each time bringing the tip closer and closer to the cigarette burned sun before slicing through the atmosphere. Holy shit. Fingernail scratches on the skin of heaven. And you know what that means. It's time to show up for weekend detention. <laughs> the signs around town call it San Dimas, but you've only ever known it as home. San Dimas High isn't a particularly well-funded high school, but the teachers are pretty good at pretending to care when it matters. A minivan pulls up in the school's front parking lot. Inside, a man with a bushy beard and kind eyes looks into the rearview mirror. Next to him in shotgun is another man holding the hand of the first and smiling sadly. In the back seat, we see a teenage boy. Matt, who's that teen? It's Lincoln Lee Wilson. Some people <laughs> call him Link. Short for Lincoln, and he's in uh, he's in trouble. He's going to detention, isn't he? He disappointed his dad. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh. So like twice as bad. So oh. the father of yours that is driving, Grant, 
says, I just want you to know, I'm very glad that you've shown up for detention. It would have been very easy to not tell us that you had detention. It would have been very easy to sneak away. And I just want to say I really respect that you were up front with. I mean, I'm still disappointed in what you did, of course. Of course, of course. Um, I just want to say, uh, well done, Link. No, no, like you always told me, look, trust is the one thing that you can't repair. That's so, right. you know, of course I wouldn't lie to you, Dad. I'm, oh, I'm so sorry about what I did. Your other father in the shotgun, Marco, says like, no, no, you don't have to apologize. Remember, we don't apologize except to the people that we heard. So it doesn't do any good to apologize to us, you know? It's about finding that peace within yourself and, and, and moving forward. Does that make sense, Grant? And Grant's yeah. like, yeah, that's close enough. Yeah, sure. I've <laughs> <be>. <laughs> already apologized to Mrs. Anderson so many times. I, I, oh. That's very good. Marco says she may not forgive you immediately for that, and that's okay. We got to let her, you know, be on her own journey, but you did the right thing. This is a good first step for you, and... uh Honestly, uh, you know, maybe this will do you some good. Your father and I haven't been the hardest on you, so who knows? Maybe some some consequences. Of her and, and Grant's like, calm down. It's okay. It's all right. I'm scared to see him go, too. And Marco's like, I'm just scared about our little boy. It's just, and, and if anybody, if any street toughs come up to you <laughs> in detention, nope. you just run. You don't be a hero. <laughs> you run. Dads, I already, I already told you there's no bullies at school, and everybody's really nice to me, and I'm super safe there. So don't worry about me. Your father, Grant, says, I'm driving to the airport shortly. I'm going to be on my business trip for like a week. So I've checked with daddy. He says, pointing at Marco and says, like, he's got all your, your meds ready and I your food. Uh, all your meals are already prepped. I already put them in the fridge. All you got to do is heat them up. And I'm going to be calling you every day on the metaverse. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna, I'm going to see you every day there. <laughs> and we're going to. I know. 4.30 p.m. I got. 4.30 p.m. I got the global clock that tells me what time it is, where you are and where right. I am. I, the I Zucker got clock. It. That's right. Yeah. Zucker. <laughs> all hail the Zucker clock. I'll be back in meat space in a week. I'll be fine. It's just, it's just high school. I told you the first, it's been fine so far, dad. I'm okay. It's just high school is very big. There could be a lot um, of bullies. You know, our, our home, we had a nice little homeschool and, and everything was very, very safe. And I respected your decision to try to go to a bigger school. And I just want you to know that I'm a little worried. And I, I felt like it's okay for me to be vulnerable with you. Well, absolutely. Just know that I'm, it's, <laughs> that, oh, Grant, I'm sorry. You're right. It's okay for you to be vulnerable. I'm sorry. I wasn't listening to your feelings. You're absolutely right about that. Just I remember, I'm that. very tall, and I don't sound like it, <laughs> but I am tough, and my voice will sound tough at some point, like you told and me. It's and okay it's okay if it doesn't. It will. Um, okay, I should go. If, if I stay here too long, I'm, I'm not going to want to go. I, I love you both. Okay, see you. Mwah. And uh, both your bad Daryl was right to not talk to his kid. <laughs> <laughs> and the moment I get out of the car... I look around for bullies. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting like a pulls out shades, throws on leather jacket, nope. runs switchblade comb through. That's a roll for checking for bullies. <laughs> yeah, guy, give me a give me a roll. Give me a perception check. <laughs> Wait, yeah. drop your dice, freshman. I you got stop, you stop. I got 12. <laughs> 12, 12 bullies. 12, 12 bullies that circle you. <laughs> they go, well, well, well. Oh. Me and my 11 friends here are looking for somebody to beat the shit out of. Hey, it's the varsity soccer team. Hey, guys. <laughs> Why are you here on a Saturday? Oh, hey, wait a second. Didn't you, aren't you on the team? Didn't you? No, I you just oh, tried out. I, I wish I was on varsity. Of course I'm not on varsity. The coach said it maybe next year. I'm really really tall. I am really tall. By the way. You are really <laughs> tall. They're very amazing tall you're not on, this, on the team. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, what are you guys doing here? Oh, wait, you guys probably practice on Saturdays. We That's practice like... on Saturdays. That's why San Dimas High has the strongest football so soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> I took a semester abroad in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you're so cool. cultured. I'm cultured and cool. See what are you, you doing here? <laughs> I, got, I got detention. Ooh. You hear 12 voices going, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> And they automatically <laughs> harmonize. <laughs> and they go, well, 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 once you get out, maybe uh, we don't care. <laughs> well, we're just here practicing. You go to detention. You're tall and we appreciate that. But apparently you're not good enough to be on varsity. So <laughs> bye. Hey, really quick, guys. I try to put on a really like cool demeanor. Can I do like intimidation or something? Yeah, sure. I roll a three. So my dad always says, I think you should express your feelings and it would be nice to know what it is about me that makes you so likely to bully me and maybe I'll do better to not do that. And then we can be more friends because I think I'm going to be on your guys' team next year. So why don't you just give it to me? What, what don't you like about me? So with your three roll, as you're saying that, you hear two power windows roll down and both of your dads <laughs> poke their heads out of the van because they haven't driven away yet. And they're like... <laughs> 
<laughs> like, hey, what's going on? Hey, Link, what's going on? Are you the new friends of yours? Are they being nice to you? It's us. It's his gay dads. Are you? Is everything okay? <laughs> yeah, this is the varsity soccer team, and they're you know they're really nice, right, guys? And they go, yeah, we're super nice. Nice to meet you, dads. And they look at you and they go, the only reason we're being nice to you is because your dads seem really sweet. They are really sweet. Yeah. That's okay. not going to do well for you, well, though, in I'm this gonna, school. I'm gonna this walk... is a cutthroat school. <laughs> no nice parents. No well, nice parents. I like, hey, no, I like your parents. Your parents are cool, but you, I get piece of shit hey, vibes from hey, you. Hey, <laughs> hey, dads, look how fast I can run. Keep the window rolled down. And then I just <laughs> run into, I have all the windows rolled down so that the dads are giving me protective cover from the boys. I'm just going to run to, <laughs> I'm going to run to the detention they office. They go, good, good job, Link. Keep those knees up. <laughs> Next, a silver sedan drives up. In the front seat, a powerful feminine figure, because all women are powerful, is driving. <laughs> this is Veronica Marlowe Stampler. In the seat next to her, turned around completely to face the back seat, is Veronica's husband, Terry. Veronica says, uh, Terry Jr. And the man in the front seat does not react because he knows he is not being addressed. Who is being addressed? Beth. Teresa Marlowe in the back is being addressed, but it is certainly not acting like she is being addressed. She is not responding to that at all. And her arms are crossed and she is sighing very loudly, like every 15 <laughs> seconds. So Veronica says, I'm so sorry, scary. Yes, yeah, scary. None of this Terry Jr. bullshit. I just meet this guy and then like suddenly... I'm a junior, like he, mm, mm. I understand it's inconvenient <laughs> that your your father, my new husband has the same name as you, but I, we had to come up with some, I mean, yes. If you don't want to be Terry Jr., if you'd rather be scary, that's that's perfect. I feel like you'd call your stepdad Terry Jr. Cause you're like, I yeah. was here first. <laughs> yeah, he's Terry Jr. I have seniority in this family. <laughs> yeah, so you just keep calling me scary. Yeah, no, I, I will uh, t scare. Cause scary. I am. And and scary <laughs> and scary stares at Terry Jr. like really intensely and Terry, upsettingly just stares. Terry Jr. goes, I'll ask again just to make sure because you didn't answer me the previous seven times I asked. <laughs> I, I thought maybe you couldn't hear me, but is there anything that you need before detention or do you need pens or food? I made lunch and he produces a plastic bag. I don't care. I need you to stop asking me about like th things and like start like understanding because like you're so infuriating. Like I, you don't even get like anything. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Terry goes, I would love to understand. And Veronica just goes, oh, it's, it's okay. She just needs time to, it's just, you just give her some time. I don't have time. The whole world is ending You're look right. at the windshield mom look at the bug on the windshield mom it's yep. like dead and it didn't even really get to live mm -hmm. and neither neither <laughs> am i i'm just like a bug in the back of a car yep, and i got this stupid face looking at me terry goes oh i'm going on the on the trip and i don't want the last thing i say we say to be you know her her the, the, I, I just, if you just take the lunch i'll be really happy so could you could you maybe and he like tries to like just into your hands with the plastic baggie of just sandwich scary takes it from his hands and then puts it on the the seat and like leaves it there that's chill that you're going like at least nobody's gonna be like watching youtube and crying over like top 60 inspirational sports moments or something stupid like that i don't watch all 60 of them i just watch <laughs> the miracle on ice or whatever, whatever. Terry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so veronica says like it's okay honey I'll, I'll i'll be taking care of her while you're gone but say goodbye terry please for mommy say my name scary Say goodbye, Terry. Please. Goodbye, Terry. <laughs> Smell you later. <laughs> she steps out and walks away. The window rolls down, and Terry goes, you forgot your lunch. So I'll just, I'll leave it here. And he just opens the car door and puts it on the curb and then closes the car door. <laughs> and goes, okay, we're leaving now. And then pauses to see if you turn back around and say anything. I don't. Oh, okay. And they drive away. And the entire time they drive away, Terry's like looking in the rearview mirror to like keep his eye on you and make sure you're okay. And I try to get the lunch without him noticing me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, that's a rule, that's a rule baby. Yeah. yeah. Give me a stealth roll. I got a two. <laughs> okay. So wow. you, you do it, but he sees you do it. And like the last thing you see before the car drives out of view is him smiling a little bit. And then 12 soccer players come at you going, well, well, well. <laughs> Look who we have here. Former soccer star, Terry Marlowe. What happened, Terry? Did you lose your passion for the game? Because we could really use you back. We real our, our girls team. <laughs> Six of us are girls. I didn't mention it. We're, we, we miss you terribly. No, I didn't lose my passion. It's like I got passion in other things, you know, like more important things like like, like what? Well, just like 
close your eyes and think about this. 12 soccer players close their eyes. <laughs> you hear the fleshy clap of 12 <laughs> eyelids there <laughs> slapping <laughs> shut at the same time. <laughs> Freddie, I want you to design the fuck out of that. Oh, we're designing effect. 12 slaps. Oh, yeah. All right. Butthole Ricochet. That's the name of my new band that I'm forming. <laughs> and you guys. That's are- what you wanted us to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's such a visual name. Yeah, but it's like from the heart and it's like about pain and real. And it's like not this bullshit soccer stuff where it's like, that's hey. a game. That's a game. I'm done with games. See you guys in detention. Or I guess if you're no, not going to. We're, we're, not, we're <laughs> here. We're okay, here to, yeah, we're then here to, you, guys, you guys just keep like practicing or whatever. But like, I'm going to go into detention. All right. We'll have fun at detention. They watch you go. A few minutes later, a convertible pulls up. Top down, music blaring. In the front seat, a strikingly beautiful and powerful woman, because all women are powerful, <laughs> adjusts her sunglasses, even though there's no real need for them. This is Cassandra Swift, former daytime TV star and parent to the boy sitting shotgun. She hands the boy a plastic bag bulging with soft corners. It seems to be filled with a shit ton of video game boxes. She says, oh. you can play these during detention, right? Like they let you play games. Hey, Taylor, I'm happy for you and I'm going to let you finish. But I just want to say <laughs> oh. that Glenn Close Boo. was the best dad oh. of all time. Boo. Of all time. I didn't know you had that prep bad yep, boo. Yep, 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 yep. Detention's so stupid, but I suppose it's just another obstacle on my journey. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, it's another obstacle. Kurama! Yamate kudasai! And my self-driving car comes to a stop. Because <laughs> it's the future, Anthony! I have asked you not to do that. I need to be in control of the car. We could get into accidents. I appreciate that you're learning Japanese, but please. I reset the car's language to Japanese so I could control I know, you need to switch that back. I can't, I can't follow the GPS instructions when it's saying stuff in Japanese. Good luck navigating the menus, Mom. Perhaps if you took a little bit more time with manga and a little less time with movies, you'd be in a better position to operate your own vehicle. Oh, that actually gives me some good news. I did get an offer on uh, doing some voice work for an anime for a dub for what? doing the voices for, for an anime dub. <laughs> you love anime. I'm doing a voice. Nagisa Hayo, the ninja with the heart of gold, the one that she's like seven years old, like, I'm, I'm going to do a voice like this. It's oh, gonna sound no. Really- <laughs> no. She's not seven years old. She's 6,000 years she's old. She's not seven years old. She's 6,000 years old. Well, no, they, <laughs> they changed it, which is good for me because it's in my range. I thought this would be something we could bond over. Ugh, it's like I don't even know you anymore, mom. I can't believe it. <laughs> Okay, Handing it. my go bag. Uh, your backpack? My go sure. bag. <laughs> yeah, here's your back. She reaches in the back it's seat and brings very you your backpack. Heavy. You hear like just stuff clanking around in there. Taylor? What? Are there weapons in here? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a weapon when you have the okay, skill I'm set. Gonna, <laughs> I'm going to unzip this real quick and make sure that we don't need you to get in detention for another reason. All right, and she goes through your backpack. Are there weapons in there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, there's like a Leatherman multi-tool. She takes that out. Oh, come on, Mom. I there's a knife in here. Something. They make them like that, Mom. I, d- it you, comes you're with not going to have to explain, to explain that to the principal. They all... <sighs> Fine. I'm, this is for your benefit. All right. She takes that out. And then, like, you know, there's the paracord and, you know, various. She goes, there's no way you need this. There's mom? no way. Mom? Mom? Roll persuasion with that. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for mom? Mom? <laughs> mom? Wow. Plus zero. What's that like? Mm. Uh, 13. She walked into the right room. Yeah, she, probably, she did. <laughs> it's her room, her <laughs> car. Her she car. goes, I will leave you a little bit. And she takes out all but like a yard of paracord and then tosses that into the backseat. Little does she know that with even one yard of paracord, one can fashion any number of survival mechanisms. <laughs> so you have little ceramic chunks, little bits oh, of. You mean ninja rocks, yeah. Matt? Knew it. She wouldn't have seen those. She wouldn't she know would have, those. She are. would have not have investigated my ninja rocks. <laughs> I'm going to give her a D20 investigation. No, no, no. Just, ninja rocks just look like even little. Know what is this ninja really rocks her are? first encounter? There's no, there's no way this is the first time. She knows what they yeah, are. This, yeah, she knows. She's going to get advantage on investigating for any ninja rocks. Okay, so she got a five and a nine. So this time, <laughs> this, this time. pumps his fist. They're in the in seam of the <laughs> She sticks back. them into the bottom of the bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got, I'm one step ahead this time. So ninja rocks, I'm assuming, are ninja rocks for people who don't know it's if you take spark plugs and crush them the chunks of ceramic are hard enough on the most scale that you can literally kind of and we've tried this lightly, to- lightly. Like an underhand light toss into any tempered glass window will shatter it it's, really it's amazing it's, it's like, like a tiny pebble you just barely throw it at like a car window and it just shatters because it's sh- so hey, hard and sharp this. don't do that yeah, don't do it. It's, it's considered awesome. thieves' tools in yeah. a lot of jurisdictions. Whoa! Uh, because it shatters it very quietly, yeah. like to the point where it's like if you did it like on a quiet night, there's a good chance that people will not even hear it. Hell yeah! Also, useful right. tool for us to have, maybe that's why I want. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Mom, yes. Who's my dad? <laughs> I. 
again with this. You want to do this right now. You have a, your detention starts in five minutes. And you want to do this again. Well, I just got some mail from 23 and me the other day. Yeah. What did it say? It, well, it said that my DNA is actually not human. At first, I thought I screwed it up by accidentally. It sounds like you screwed it using, up. Well, but it seems kind How of they weird. Even check though? for that. Why would they even? Right. You That's what I'm saying. Submitted Mom. like semen or something yeah. to 23. Yeah, 23. Me. me in the future required me to jack off into a tube. <laughs> If you're going to try to use that to explain why you've been doing it so much, I tell you, I'm not buying it. Mom, I'm not buying it, honey. Am I? Is my dad part not human or something? It's just so weird. Anyway, I'm going to write a complaint. Your dad was a good man. He had to go away. I haven't heard from him. I don't know if he's still with us. I miss him every day. I'm sorry that he wasn't around for you. I Typical. don't think... I'm pretty sure he was a guy. <laughs> I, think he, I think he was just a human guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have alien ghost DNA or whatever it is from one of those mangas you were watching. Ugh, whatever. Okay. Bad luck with your audition, Mom. I hope you don't ruin my fave. One of the greatest canonical, <laughs> greatest animes of all time. I'm gonna. I'm actually getting gonna... on the legacy of Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna go do my first session today, so you can go ahead and I'd call Lyft to get home when you're out. Ugh. Or lifts helicopters. I don't want to. Li I don't want to lift. I'd rather ride one of those lift turbo scooters. Those are dangerous. <laughs> Whatever, mom. Okay. Well, I'll see all you right. Home. Love you, mom. Love you too. Okay. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Finally. What do the soccer oh, players yeah. do for him? Twelve guys. <laughs> well, well, well. Wait, if it isn't Mr. Weeb, what's going on? What up, cucks? <laughs> oh, 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 you get a bunch of people go. Oh, as you call them, cucks. Wait, can cucks just be cool now? Yeah, cucks, yeah, cucks cool. is a really normal word. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's cucks is the new bestie. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I dap all of them. I like do cool, like cool. Cool. Oh, 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 it's Taylor. Hand. It's Taylor. It's Taylor. You see any good anime lately, Taylor? <laughs> oh, the best. You're subscribed to my Substack, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna write some reviews this weekend. Keep Please an eye do. out. Yeah, you're a connection to anime. Like, we, there's just too many to watch, but you really narrow down the, the, the episodes that we can super watch. Like, when we're all hanging out together, we watch I'm a Lonely Robot in Love, and then halfway through the story, it becomes a different sort of thing that's not quite as good as the first half. We loved it so much in the first all half. All 43 stopped, episodes? All four, well, we, again, we watched the first 23 because it kind of gets bad in the middle. But yeah, like, we, it kind of drops off with the Costco storyline. Yeah, yeah, not a big fan of it. But hey, without you, without your newsletter, we would have definitely wasted another 23 half hours of our lives. So thanks, man. You're the coolest person in school. <laughs> no problem. Oh my god. No problem. And as I and as I, I say that soccer players. And as I say that I doff my pork pie hat. Oh no. Oh, no. The fedora of the right. future. The, fedora the future. That's the beauty of the audio format is you can save off on a horrifying detail like that until the absolute <laughs> right moment. And we can forget that you have a pork pie hat until you deign to remind us of it for the rest so of the wait, series. So we just declare there's just the coolest kid in school. According, to, great according to these 12. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Freddy's character is the coolest kid in school who loves anime, has a ton of sweet weapons, and his hot mom drives a convertible <laughs> and gives what cool happened? video games, and his mysterious dad is a demon. And That's those the weapons? Teenager. Freddy is playing. Freddy is the main character. And then Taylor looks into the bag and like, kind of digs through the games, and it's like, indie game, indie. Oh, no triple A's? Whatever. <laughs> it's just another day in the life. Of Taylor Swift. And then the anime <laughs> intro plays like, Wicked Day, Wicked Day. As you head into the school, as your anime intro theme song plays in your head, a four seater hybrid pulls up. A normal passerby might double take at it because the driver and shotgun seats seem to be taken up by the same man twice. Twins. But more than <laughs> twins, if you will. I'm twins, not certainly. <laughs> more than a few seconds examination reveals subtle differences between the two twins. One has deep stress lines around his eyes and a beard just on the wrong side of unkempt. The other sports a fragile, wavering smile and a close cropped beard, as well as glasses. In the back, man, this family's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> they give their kid normal. <laughs> In the back, a powerful woman finishes checking a lunchbox for the seventieth time and passes it to the teenage boy next to her. The lunchbox says "Swallows Ice Cream" on it in big letters. And the boy is what does he look like? He looks weird. He doesn't <laughs> look like a normal boy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the two men, the you, same man so twice. far. The, the witness outside of the car sees in order the same man, man twice, twice and then a boy that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to truly paint the scene, what you see is two twins, a strong, powerful woman, and Jimmy Neutron. Uh, oh, because God. what you see in the back is Teeny the Teen, the mascot of San Dimas High School. Within the shell of that mascot is Normal Oak. So, yeah, basically imagine like a big... Like a big head, and then like, 
<laughs> yeah, a mascot. A big mascot head. Yeah, we know what mascots no, a are. Boy. There's no mascot then, that has a small imagine, head. Imagine, if you will, a mascot. <laughs> a big human boy head, and then like a sort of like Bart Simpson esque t shirt and shorts, but then like imagine like sleeves that are flesh colored, oh, ending in big no. flesh colored hands. God. And so that's uh, and that a little the, cool little curl on the and a hair. cool spit curl. I definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the idea that it is a Jimmy Neutron costume that has just this been, is important. Jimmy Neutron where, went to the public domain. Where are the eye holes? <laughs> Are what? they like the? Is it a grinning mouth? Oh, is it yeah, an open yeah, yeah. grinning mouth, and the eyes are the mouth, or are the eyes of the eyes like where are the eye holes? Here's what we'll say: the <laughs> eye holes are in the mouth, nice. but there's not enough room in the head. Is like shoved pretty far down to fit <laughs> in the uh, hatchback Prius. I'm assuming Great. so. Normal cannot see all that well there right now, go. so he kind of fumbles for the lunch pail that his mom has said to ha- <laughs> handed to him. He says, "Thanks, mom. I appreciate it." Your uh, your uncle, who's in the front seat, who's driving, Lark Oak turns around and he pulls out a gun and he says <laughs> and he says yeah so normal i know you're going to i know you're going to detention there might be some really dangerous kids here i want you to just keep this in your backpack oh and your God. your dad sparrow in the shotgun goes no no what are you doing you can't, you can't have a gun give me that oh why not dad come on no you can't all the cool kids are doing in future hell america <laughs> no you can't he cannot have it can you imagine if he gets caught with that he'll go to like i don't know double detention or whatever and your mother goes <laughs> now now for having a gun in American schools is a detention. Is detention. Yeah. This is yeah. the 32nd Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> so Rebecca says, what if the truth is somewhere in the middle? What if instead of taking the gun or not taking a gun, you take my pepper spray instead? And she takes pepper spray out of her purse and puts it in your hand. And your uncle Lark is like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, sure. That's that's fine. And Sparrow's like, that also seems bad if he gets caught with that. But oh, God, I mean, ugh, do you really have to wear the costume into detention? Like, Dad, can you, uh, but the costume is a whole reason I have detention. If I take it off now, then what's the point? Uh, got him. I look. Uh, uh, okay, so have you sh- have you showered? What is the? Uh, I'm smelling something because you didn't take it, the mascot costume off when you showered, and I don't remember when you showered or if you showered oh in a God. month. And maybe you want to leave the costume oh. in here so I can clean it, and you can leave, and then I'll, I'll give you the clean costume when you get out of detention. Dad, but I appreciate your concern, but as I've explained to you, the punks over at Chaparral High School want to prank the mascot outfit, and no one is taking it seriously, which is why I have to wear it to protect it. If I leave it at home, who knows? what's going to happen to it, you know? And to answer your question, it's been a while since I showered, but I am pretty much naked under here, so, like, I'm not getting my clothes dirty, you know? The only thing that's getting dirty is the inside of the mascot costume. It says I'm the only one who's ever going to wear it because I'm going to be the mascot until I graduate to senior year, and then I'll probably take it to college with me. Uh, It doesn't matter. (laughs) So, uh... uh, Normal's a hero. Sparrow's a a fucking hero. Normal's Normal's a patriot. Normal cares about the school. Sparrow opens his mouth to keep complaining, and Lark waves him down and says, like, it's, it's fine. He can keep the costume on. While he was asleep, I sewed some Kevlar into the front and the back, so he's probably safer in there than he is outside of it. Oh it did God. feel a little dead. Come on, Uncle Lark. I need to be able to do flips in this thing. I mean, I can't do flips yet, but I want to learn. It's not going to be easy with lead bulletproof stuff in here. If with you, class 3A armor in here. Well, hey, if you uh, feel like you can't do flips, then maybe I can teach you things that uh, are not a complete waste of time, like hunting or survival or talking to girls or talking to boys or talking to anybody. Do you have a, do you have a friend yet? Does your kid have a friend yet? It's very no, he doesn't have a friend yet. Give him time. It's fine. <laughs> He's allowed to take his time. I would love it if you had a friend, though. Your mother and I are pretty worried about look, you. Look, guys, Teeny the Teen is the most popular teen <laughs> at San Dimas High. And if I'm Teeny the Teen, people are going to like me. You just got to give it time. So Sparrow again, goes, ah, and uh, Rebecca, the wise three-dimensional mom, says, <laughs> says just... Hun, just just give him time. He'll he'll realize it's Teeny. Go ahead and go off to detention, and Thanks, we're so proud Mom. of you, Teeny. You're so wise. I, I that's me. I also have did a lot of stuff before I met your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who founded this ice cream empire that is on your lunchbox. Swallows ice cream. That's me. My husband is an heiress. <laughs> <laughs> good for good for Sparrow. Well, good I better go. The ice cream melts pretty quick in this thing, so I'm gonna go and try not to splash it on the inside of the mascot costume. I love you guys, and I'm I'm sorry I got detention, but I feel like it was a good cause. It was the reason, so I'm not that sorry. And then Normal takes the pepper spray from his mom and climbs out of the car. And then you head out of the car and well, 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 <laughs> it's a mascot. What's up, my cuckolds? You can't call us that. <laughs> and I start doing um, like a cheer routine. I'm like, it's the boys soccer team. You guys are going to go all the way this year. It's going to be great. I just totally believe in you. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, it, you know, honestly, the side of you kind of takes the joy out of our school. Come spirit. On, you gotta we're go. all teens here. We've got teen spirit, don't we? 
Yeah, no, we we have a lot of teen spirit. It's just like you're you're a lot. I'm a lot. Well, this whole team's a lot. There's a lot going on, and we're gonna take all of that and bring it to state this year. Hands in the middle, everybody. Oh God! And they all put their hands in the middle, and they go, "You, I'm sorry." It's just give no, me a T. No, we don't have to go through the give whole thing. Give me a T. Give me an E. e. Give me an E. E. How many E's did I do? You did two E's. That's team. That's teaming the team. Why wow, you guys don't even know the map? We'll work on I it. I thought we were just doing the word team. You want to do the, oh, God, thank you. You know, you should go to detention. It's taking so much self-control not to bully you right now. We're trying to be a positive I force in school. I appreciate it. And then Normal walks off whistling at the school theme, which is Bad Guy by Billy Eilish. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the Fighting Eilish, that's what we call a team. Oh, my uh, God. Eilish, no. God. And uh, he heads off to detention. You all open the door to the history classroom and you see Mrs. K, the history teacher and today's detention teacher, uh, sitting at her desk playing on her phone. And she says, all right, everybody sit down. Time for detention. Time, no fun. No, no fun. Welcome to the no fun zone. For a couple of you, you're seeing familiar faces by seeing each other. So Normal and Link, uh, you used to see a lot of each other at like these quasi-weekly get-togethers that your parents would throw because your parents were friends and you would go to like grills and stuff like that. But as of lately, uh, Normal, your dad, Lark, and Link, your dad, Grant, both have wanted you to sort of separate out a little bit more that you stopped going to these cookouts. They started getting protective. You got the vibe from both of your parents separately that uh, the other kids might be a bad influence. So this is maybe the first time you've actually had a chance to be in the same room together in, in quite a while. Taylor Swift, 100% bad influence. <laughs> Who's the coolest kid in school, though, actually? <laughs> Who's already got his feet up and is already playing his Nintendo. Yeah, and then I guess... They're called the Nintendos are... in the future. Great. And then I guess scary, everybody here is more or less new to you because you just recently had uh, Terry Jr. come into your life. Link definitely knew of, of Scary because uh, she's a really good soccer player. Lincoln! Oh, hey. Linky Binky! Linky hey. Binky Fo Finky. Yeah, hey, what's up? Man? I hear you can join the soccer team this year, man. What's up? Yeah, I'm on JV. Um, cool, cool. I march over and sit right next to Link. It's oh. been so long since I've seen you, dude. I know our dads are like, uh, 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 but it's like, you know, I miss you. Boom, boom, boom. And I punch him on the shoulder a bunch. Uh, yeah. Well, it wouldn't hurt that much because he's Jimmy Neutron. It's me under here. I it's have normal very low under the, under, I'm the team. Can I roll for constitution to see if it hurt me? Uh, <laughs> sure. I'm very tall, but I'm very weak. I'm roll fast, with, Roll with advantage because he does have foam hands on. It was 19. Yeah, no, it doesn't hurt at all. I still say ow. <laughs> ow. Sure. Ooh. Ow. Hey, yeah, sorry, man. Didn't mean to razz you, yeah, but, you know, hey, what's going on? Uh, you know, not much. Just it feels soccer. like you've been avoiding me. Yeah, well, you know, you're dangerous. Well. well I mean, your dad's, or, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, Mrs. K goes, you, you're in detention. You're not supposed to, like, talk in detention. Can you tell him that? Oh. Yeah, because he's talking to me. Everybody, hey, hey, stop talking. We're starting detention. The, the fun stops now. You can't socialize. The fun stopped a long time ago. I write a note to Scary and try to throw it to her. Okay, roll stealth. Do people send notes now? Is that a thing? Do we just out ourselves Woof. as the oldest human beings of all time? Yeah, I guess because like, people text each you other. You can't text phones. while in class. Oh, I think you Matthew. can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not Terry. I mean, <laughs> not, not Lincoln. Lincoln. Yes, yeah, I, guess, I feel like the first thing that happens when you come in is probably Mrs. K takes your phones. Yeah. So, like, um, so, yeah, so Mrs. K rolled a natural one on her perception. I tell Miss K now, there were 12 apes on this phone <laughs> when I gave it to you. There better be 12 when I get it back. <laughs> yes, you successfully throw your note to Scary without getting noticed. What does the note say? There's a yes and no checkbox. Oh my God. And it says, are you going to join the varsity team? They need you. <laughs> <laughs> and I give a thumbs up. Like, <laughs> I write back and like scribbled hardcore, like, <laughs> like writing. I'll think about it. Probably not, though. And you don't give the note back? You're just calling out in the note after writing, yeah. I'll think about it on, so he doesn't know what the answer is? No, I, 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 I crumble it up. It was, like, pristinely folded. I crumble it up, and I throw it back. Okay. Uh, do you want to do it sneakily or not? I don't want to do it sneakily. I want to do it because I'm really good at it. Like, I'm just, like, a perfect throw. But I think that she probably will catch me. Let me roll for it. Okay. Roll for advantage because Normal's big head is blocking the teacher's <laughs> view right now. Yeah, that's it. I got a five. Okay, so with a five... You throw it, it lands on the ground, and Mrs. K sees it, and she goes, if, can we not with the notes? And she looks at you, Link, and she goes, she says, she'll think about it. <laughs> no more notes, please. Oh. And she crumples it up and throws oh, it. Oh, did you just ask the scary girl out on a date? What? No. What? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, right. She'll think about she'll it. Think Good about luck, man. Bro. That's so cool. You're already, you're already you she's know, putting like yourself her. out there. I really appreciate it. I support you. That's great. What? No. She's just, like, really good at soccer. I, I turn yeah, uh, Jimmy is. Neutron's head around, like, backwards to look at scary, and I point. <laughs> I'm like, he's a really great guy. You should give him a chance. 
<laughs> okay, everybody, calm down, calm down. It's detention. Before we start your proper punishment, I think you all should throw yourselves upon the mercy of detention and uh, just maybe talk a little bit about how you're sorry about what you did and, and how you're going to not do what got you here again. Anybody feel free to go first. I'll go. First. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of detention, I ask you this. Is it a crime <laughs> oh, to love no. your school? Oh, no. Let I mean, me, Scary uh, Jr., hey, hey. what do you guys think? I think it depends on what you think love is. So, well, I, maybe, I mean, it's not a crime. We're not here because we're criminals. Well, it's did just he fuck the, the school or did he just like it? I did Scary not, language. That's okay. Sorry. I did not French the school, uh, but I did try to protect our beloved mascot from getting punked because I support the teams at this school. Y'all are going to go to state this year because we're not going to let Chaparral destroy this beloved institution and humiliate us by ruining the costume. So I can't say that I formally apologize, but I am sorry. And I do like big finger quotes with that, uh, that I love San Dimas High School But your so fingers much. don't go all the way to the end of the like mascot's fingers. <laughs> you so just, see, like, you hold your hands wave. Wave. <laughs> You see little, two little fingers poking out of like one finger of the glove. <laughs> That's great. So Mrs. K knows that it's probably not worth arguing with you further. This is probably not the first conversation you've had. So she goes, cool. Uh, any, anyone else next? Yeah. Let me just start by saying, is it a crime to be drawing manga in class? I contend no. It was just a little bit of extracurricular activities in the middle of a boring math class, which nobody's going to ever need after this anyway. But it, is a, it is a crime to just disrespect your teacher and not pay attention in class. So it is just, not a crime. If you don't believe Damn. Normal's not Thank you, Normal. <laughs> after immediately saying he's not going to That's why Normal's my favorite student and why oh I'm not going to continue arguing with him. So yeah, I got caught drawing an anime about my awesome life and how one day <laughs> I'm going to be the hero that this world needs because there needs to be some changes around here and I think I'm going to be the one to do it. You just fucked yourself because now that's something we have to have as bonus content on the Patreon oh, is, yes. is the fucking manga that, that uh, Taylor <laughs> oh, drew I'll himself. Oh, I'll draw it. I will go to, here's what I'll do. Listener, this is my pledge to you. Freddie Wong, a content creator, to you, listener <laughs> of Dungeons and Daddies. To you, content consumer. I, I, consumer. Oh my God. Okay, go on. I will go on YouTube and look at how to draw anime eyes <laughs> really good. I will Somehow. create a deviant art, and this will be a manga pen. Somehow Taylor is even more Freddy than Clint I, is Yeah, Freddy. it's like so, oh goodness. Oh my goodness. Apple doesn't fall far from the weeb. <laughs> Damn. All right, anybody else? Um. Okay, let me get this over with, because I don't even think I fucking, I mean, freaking uh, belong here. But, um, so I... Turned in a book report last week, and it was about the diary of Anne Frank. I realize now that by saying that when I tried to self-publish my diary and... <laughs> Keep and going. <laughs> what was by, wrong about the way you did it? That by focusing on my struggles, which are still like super dark. <laughs> your your, your cough, if, if you will. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, that, and which is like, even though my struggles are like super dark and nobody understands them and like really devastating that maybe by like saying that in my diary of Anne Frank thing, and then also saying that she was like kind of being dramatic about like some stuff, but not. You compared yourself to Anne Frank and said you had it worse than she did. It, only did you like not? in my soul. Okay, and do you feel sorry about that at all? I feel sorry for the both of us, me and <laughs> Okay. Me and Anne. And I feel like we're kind of like, yeah, I'm sorry, whatever. Fuck it. Yeah, you 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 belong here. And uh Link. Lincoln what? Lincoln Lee Wilson, please. Uh I, I think it's weird that we're all taught we don't have to tell everybody what we did. No, I think you should definitely tell everybody no. why you're I think actually everybody already knows it. I assume it spread pretty quickly amongst Look, okay, your I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I peed on a teacher's foot. It's not a big, uh, you did you what? what? Whoa. I then mean oh, to do it. I should his foot? I didn't hear who that was. That's metal. No, I, do, I didn't do it. I, I shouldn't be here. Like, Are you suggesting that you should be allowed she to She was in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's not my fault. Where was that? In the alley behind the school. Because the boys, <laughs> look, it was scary. The boys' you know, schools were those alleys you, around them. You're I really, I stayed on I, the wall of our beloved school, Lincoln? I stay hydrated because I got to perform very well, and I had to go to the bathroom, and those... <sighs> 
they're mean in the locker rooms. Like they were going to give me a hard time. They came in like, Oh, look, he doesn't even have hair on his face or whatever. And like, he's tall and his voice sounds hilarious. And like, I can't pee during that. So like, I just went behind the back and I went to pee like away from everybody. I wasn't going to show anybody anything. I was just going by myself. And then I don't know what she was doing. Why is the teacher back there? She should be working. God. Anyway, she scared me. I spun around and yeah, the piss, whatever. Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you for apologizing. Lincoln. That's I'm not, I mean, so who was the teacher? And Miss Anderson, the one who didn't look at me in the hall. Biology teacher, the urology teacher. (laughs) Yeah, yep, urology teacher. Burgeoning urology department. (laughs) Sandy, this is trade of the future. It's like when your school has a shop class. Yeah, you have a urology department. (laughs) Yep, that's all canon. (laughs) Okay, everybody, stop talking. That's it's time for detention to properly start. Six hours of total silence starting now. And you hear the sound of like a control stick, like <laughs> Mrs. K. Let's go ahead and roll uh, stealth. Stealth? You mean the one I have plus three on twenty one? Jesus Christ! Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, hear. baby. Guess what, bitch? It's another season of me owning your ass on the <laughs> dice, bitch. This sucks. Damn. I already hate season two. Yeah, she doesn't notice you. Uh, so she's staying in the games. classroom. She's staying in the classroom oh. with you. If we just have to be quiet, can I just like practice? Can I just like juggle in here? <laughs> Hell soccer yeah. ball, soccer ball. Can I just practice? No, that's not going to be quiet. I'm going to hear the thunk, thunk, thunk of you hitting it. Normal is going to roll a stealth check to see if he can whisper to Link. <laughs> okay. Being caught. Go ahead. I got a natural 20. So did she. <gasps> Shit, really? Wait, what yeah. happens? What happens now? <laughs> it means you think that she didn't hear and she hears and doesn't convey that she heard. Okay. Wow. But that means I lost. What is my natural 20 not good for anything? Maybe she hears me, but... She thinks it's cool. <laughs> yeah, whatever you say, she thinks it's cool. Oh, Will, Will, this is the most powerful OP move you could possibly do. Hey, Lincoln, do you talk to Taylor Swift that much anymore? No, I don't talk to you very much either. I, well, I, I know, I just, you know, I guess he seems weird lately. What? Like, I haven't talked to him in a while, like, you know, and I kind of miss not hanging out with you because we're buds, but, uh, like, I was kind of relieved to not have to hang out with Taylor anymore. Oh, that's a lot. Um, You should tell him that. Don't tell me Why that. Why would I'm, I tell him that? that I'm mad. Me. What are you guys gossiping about? What? what? You guys are gossiping. We're not gossiping. Teacher, I'm trying to be quiet, and there's a lot. I don't want to say who's doing it, but there's a Teacher, lot of- Teacher, we got a pussy in here. Every- we got a certified- <laughs> First of all, hey, that's that's two strikes on the problematic chart for you, honey. Oh, what happens? You cancel me? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> you get canceled from school. Oh, I get called out. Called out of school. Yes. Whatever. I've been called out by my own heart. Here at San Dimas High, the teen spirit believes in calling people in, not calling them out oh my yeah God. no one you smell like teen spirit yeah mrs k goes man that's really cool that kid to ask him if the other kid, if he still talks to that other kid <laughs> well, it's nice i, lo- that I love it when kids, kids try to maintain relationships with their peers <laughs> well, how cool he gracefully slid in the exposition he wanted to so well yeah your stock has risen in the eyes of mrs k and uh yeah you remember uh there was a time when uh taylor swift's mom would bring him around and uh would just sort of hang out with your parents for a bit and shoot the ship but that time has passed so The hours pass very, very slowly. Actually, they pass pretty fast when you're playing a visual novel. (laughs) For all but one of you, the hours pass very, very slowly. (laughs) Nice. After a long, long time, all but one of you feel that something is off. Your adrenaline slowly starts pumping and then gets faster. Your heart starts beating faster. That's happening for me, too. Because you're, yeah, because you're on a raid, yes. Nice. No. Visual novels got it's the second act turn. In, in, yeah, in the future, they have raids in visual novels. I'm trying to level wow. up our fucking experience. Your heart starts beating faster and faster. You're panicking, and you do not know why. Probably because my dating meter's really low. Oh Again, God. not you. The other three. You feel like you're being chased by something. You feel like it's gaining on you. You feel like you were about to die. And then you realize it's not you. You're not the one feeling this. Your dads are. <gasps> Somewhere, something awful is chasing them, all of them. It gets closer and closer. Well, I guess for you, scary, it's your stepdad, not your dad dad. Yeah. Do I feel this as well? No, you don't feel this. Uh, Ooh. But for the three of you, it gets closer and closer. And then there's a scream of four voices, all of your dads or stepdad or uncle screaming in unison. You, through your father's minds, feel yourselves watching them. And all of you, again, except for you, Taylor, know that for certain, your fathers are going to die if you cannot find them and save them. And they're going to die soon. Normal, you feel your uncle and your father tell you to stay safe. Link, you feel your father tell you to take care of your daddy, Marco, and love him very much. Scary, you feel Terry's sadness that he didn't get time to know you better. You also get the unquestionable sense that your fathers love you, and you feel them say goodbye. And then suddenly the screams cut out, and all of you are left in silence. 
Mrs. K hasn't moved. She doesn't seem to have noticed. I throw up in the helmet. Mrs. K, oh, oh no, go oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. Oh my God. I gotta go. I gotta go call my dad. And I run out yeah. of the room. I scream, dad. And I run out of the room. As you all head toward the door to run out of the room, there's a knock and then the door just opens and dunk hits you in the head normal. And a man in a black suit now stands in the doorway. I run past him. He watches you go and says, stop. No, no. <laughs> and I run. It's about your dad. Oh, uh, tell me as I'm running. <laughs> So you just keep running? <laughs> what? Running. You, you can talk, man. Come where, on. Where are you running to? I'm going go to I'm gonna go run to talk to my dad to tell him about Grant. I got, I got, what? The man goes and takes out a device from his coat pocket. Looks like a remote control and points it at you and... You die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, ev you evaporate. You feel something hit you in the lower back and electrical charge goes through your body and you go rigid and you fall to the ground. It goes, it's... Stop. Ow, what the fuck, Dickwad? Holy shit. And, and he turns to Mrs. K and he says, uh, I have, it's from the superintendent of the school. And he takes out a badge from his pocket and he shows it to her. And then he takes out a letter and hands it to her. And she looks through this as the man goes in the hallway and throws you over his shoulder and brings you back to the room. And Mrs. K says, um, oh, okay. Uh, apparently the principal suggested community service in lieu of finishing out your detention today. So Wait, who's this what? Guy? we've already been here for yeah. like six hours. Yeah, and for the last well, you've been here for three, and for the last three, I guess you're doing a normal pulls the uh Doomy Neutron off his face, revealing his sweaty face, pimple marks, greasy hair, oh. and a puddle hasn't of bathed vomit comes in a out. week, covered in vomit, and says, Miss K, something horrible is happening to our dads. I don't know who this guy is, but he's probably involved. You gotta help us. So roll uh persuasion. I got a four. She got a five. <laughs> so she goes, it's signed by the superintendent. It's got the C. I, it's, it's just three more hours. You'll probably be like de-weeding the school lawn. Don't worry about it. It'll don't be you fine. know? You don't understand. No, I clearly don't. The man with the suit gets close to you and he whispers like, I can take you to your dad's. Why would I want to go to my dad? I mean, my stepdad, not even my real dad. Because if you don't, he'll, he'll die. Oh, mm -hmm. I guess that wouldn't be cool. Taylor stands and confidently struts over to this gentleman, and sticks his hand out for a handshake and says, Taylor Swift, and who might you be? I guess roll persuasion or charm or something to see if he wants to shake your hand. Eight. He uh, does not shake your hand. He goes, that's classified. Oh, I and knew it. He opens the door wider and ushers you forward. He goes, we're headed to the parking lot. And he leads you out to the parking lot. And there and Taylor is a beaming smile on his face because this is all of his dreams coming true like he knew would happen. And he goes like, oh, yeah, I guess you can come too as he sees you, Taylor. Oh, <laughs> I do not notice this. I'm just, I'm just strutting. You are led to a limousine. The man in the suit opens the door and ushers you in. Taylor tries to get in first. Does anybody can try to stop him? No. no. Normal has grabbed a bunch of paper towels on the way out and is trying to scoop the vomit out of the helmet. Great. Oh. Wait, Mr. Classify, where the fuck are we going? You'll find out when we get there. It's not a long drive. What? You said we were going to do weeds or whatever here. Like, no, where's my dad? Where's my father? It's classified. I'm not, I'm not allowed to know, and you're allowed to know, but I'm not allowed to tell you because I don't know. Now, I... <laughs> what? <laughs> That's some Tom Clancy-ass fucking improv right there. Yeah, I do kind of remember hearing something about adults and strangers and not getting into cars when people say they know your dad. That was like the don't get into the stranger car video number one was like they Whoa, come guys, up and say come on, they know your dad. Chill out, normal. It's fucking metal to get into cars with strangers. Hey, there's a, there's like sodas and like candies in this limousine, guys. <laughs> there are a lot of sodas and candies. Oh, yeah, man. that was to... Maybe we, there's a body in the back. While this is going on, normal has pulled up a stranger danger video on YouTube and is showing it there. I'm like, yeah, see, like, there's see this creepy guy on with the video. His you see the, the guy. Yeah, it's, it's, the exactly same, like it's the same guy. guy. It's the same guy wearing guy. the same suit. He didn't even answer any. What's my dad's name? Your dad's name is Sparrow Oak, and your uncle's name is Lark Oak. Well, but what? We just I pepper spray him. Okay, great. Roll dexterity to see if you can use the pepper spray properly. A natural one. Okay, so you pepper spray yourself directly in the mouth oh! of the suit. You pepper spray Scary yourself in the face. Scary thinks that is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> the guy just grabs you and tosses you into the car. He just tossed. He just tossed normal. Were you in the car or did you no. not get in the car? No, I try to run again. Everybody else is in the car though. Yeah, I All right, so Taylor is definitely weird. in the car. So, yeah, so Scary's in the car. So you hear chunk chunk as the car doors lock. And he goes, and he gets in the driver's seat of the car and just starts chasing you down with the car. So go ahead and roll dexterity and see if you can evade his car. That's a 17 plus three. That's a 20. Jesus Christ. I do some cool soccer moves, well, he's too. He's tall and gangly and fast, yeah, right? Yeah. Tall and gangly. Okay. Got some footwork. He tries to drive the car, like, right next to you, and you just juke him very easily down a side street, and you seem to have lost him for a second. 
I guess, what are you going to do now? Because you're you're not at call, the school. Call. Hey, anybody out there, put, pull oh, your where phone. Are the 12 bullies? Where are the 12 soccer players? Oh, that's true. You lose the limo <laughs> behind you, but then you hear the, the tromp of 12 pairs of feet boom, 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 as they come up and they go, well, well, well. <laughs> Looks like somebody's trying to get out of detention. We believe no, in guy, serving time as a sign. No, no, no. This guy, this guy, this, this my dad's dying and this guy's trying to get, I'm, fuck you. You guys are mean. Then they run. You can go ahead and roll something if you want to get a natural 20 and evade the grips of six people. No, I got 17. But so yeah, six to pairs of arms wrap around. You go, well, well, somebody doesn't want to go de-weed the lawn in school. We believe in having a well-weeded lawn because we're soccer players and it helps us <gasps> get too, more traction. That's not what this is about. You want <laughs> us to lose, you little jealous JV. Yeah, does the JV stand for jealous boy? Virgin. I'm freshman. <laughs> jealous <laughs> virgin. <laughs> what? That's not about, what does that have to do with anything? Well, 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 jealous virgin, it's time to pay the piper. You feel yourself get hoisted up by six soccer players and they go, you who? limo guy and they they drag you out of the room they go, here's the virgin you're missing you take it you take him to virgin jail and holy shit virgin jail the limo driver pulls up and rolls down the window he goes yes i'm taking them to virgin jail this and they is go, why my well, dad didn't want me to go to school this is horrible i love my dad so i say as i get pulled in oh, he's in the trunk yeah they put you in the trunk they go ha ha take him to virgin jail and they slap the trunk twice and he goes thank you you're so helpful i'm so i'm so glad i ran into you and they go and Anytime. Hey, why are you taking those kids? And he drives away. So the limousine drives for a little while. You are driven to a perfectly boring, nondescript corporate plaza, the kind with tons of small buildings all belonging to different offices like dentists and shit. Die, die. The limo stops outside of a building with a sign reading DADDIES on it in all caps. <laughs> Uh, the trunk. This doesn't look like a virgin jail. This looks like a BDSM fucking podcast. In parentheses, this is not a BDSM thing underneath it. <laughs> not a BDSM oh. corporation. <laughs> <laughs> the doors pop open, the trunk pops open, and you hear uh, the man who drove you here say, Get out, go inside. He just drives away, just leaving you alone. In what? The oh, okay. So there he is a. Leaves? He just leaves. What a pro. If he's just a limo driver to go to all that work of tasering people and chasing them down, A for effort. Yeah. So there's a uh, set of glass double doors leading into this little building. Come on, everyone. Clearly, destiny awaits us, and it doesn't do us any good to turn away from it. I guess actually, I agree with you. Nice. Okay, so as you try the door, it is locked. You hear an uh, sound. You try the door again, and it remains locked. And oh, don't worry. I got something for this, and I reach into my go bag. <laughs> okay. Get your ninja rocks. <laughs> well, yeah, you said it's a glass double door, it right? Is. I ninja <laughs> rock oh that God. door. Okay, so as you reach in your bag to get ninja rocks, actually, everybody roll perception. Got a four. Fourteen. Seven. I got a nine. Okay, so nobody uh, sees anything. It's, it's what you hear first that makes you turn. You hear the... Slap of bare flesh on concrete, and you turn around. It, yeah, fl- I said flesh. Uh, <laughs> you turn around to see an infant. <laughs> what? A human baby stepping towards you with adult posture, a straight back, <laughs> long strides, no what? wobbling in its gait, it is entirely naked except for a diaper, and it is walking towards you fast. The slap of its bare feet on asphalt getting quicker and quicker. Uh, it stares blankly at you. Does anyone see that baby? Yeah, what? Yeah. Um, uh, hello, uh, baby? That's the most hey, fucked bud. up thing I've ever seen. Oh, oh what a, you're going to be a soccer player one day. Look at that walk. What a little cute guy. Hey, what's up, buddy? It and opens I go, its mouth. It bears two rows of fully formed adult teeth. Oh, no. It gnashes them together faster and faster. It flies into a dead sprint. Like the T-1000. I'm going to try and, thr- and throw uh, these ninja rocks at the window. How many are you going to use? I will say that I had like, let's do like a 1d4 and that's how many I have. Okay. And then I will roll for one of them. So I had in my pocket three of them. Because you have three. Roll a d20. If you get more than a 10, it'll break the window. 11. Ooh. Okay. So at 11, the window cracks. Quietly. Uh, it doesn't shatter entirely, but there's a hole in it. There are cracks in the facade of the window. The baby keeps running at you. I want to kick it. Like a okay. soccer ball. Uh, so one thing that we're going to change mechanically is you're not going to have to roll to hit him. You're just automatically going to hit him, and you're just going to roll your damage. So just give me a D4 roll, and we'll see how much damage that does. Link is definitely like, looks back at his carry and be like, oh, she sees this one, so our kicker I am. It's really good. We had good kick. <laughs> Three. Oh no. The tip of your foot finds purchase in its round baby belly and your tip foot- of my foot? Am I a fucking toe kicker? Come on, I'm a soccer player. Yeah. Oh, you're a soccer player. <laughs> right. 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 Come right. on, sorry. Fucking, the yeah. fucking laces, baby. I'm, J- I'm JV. I'm not a fucking idiot. It's the flat of your <laughs> the, the inside of your foot? No, Is the that flat, you the top, the flat yeah. of the foot. The, the laces. Top, okay, top the laces. Of the foot. Okay, so yeah. the laces of your foot impact on the soft, bouncy belly of this baby. <laughs> 
and it goes, <laughs> but now your foot is like right within grabbing reach of it. Uh-oh. So he, oh, so I don't like kick it away. It's a no, you don't kick move. it away. Oh, no. your foot just, you, it, it does that anime thing where like its feet dig into the gravel and then like <laughs> yeah. fucking like just tear yeah. up asphalt as it holds you back. It feels like the center of gravity of this baby is way lower than it should be. <laughs> like this baby has way more mass than it should for its size. It's like kicking uh, a medicine ball. It's kicking a medicine. It's exactly what it feels like, it's like kicking, like a, kicking medicine a medicine ball. Med- it was it Ali McBeal with the CG dancing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Early days. The baby reaches forward with its small fat fingered baby hands and grabs your ankle and its fingers sink into your ankle uh, like softly and initially it doesn't hurt and then it hurts a whole lot Ow. so you take three damage Link okay. Link your soccer foot he only has one man <laughs> that's his golden that's, foot that's, that's oh, the don't make fun. Foot. I know good soccer players can kick with both feet but I'm, I'm learning I'm trying oh god ow that's a third of my health by the way Oof. I want to try to kick the face. All right, so you kick it in the face, and uh, the moment she's winding up, I'm like, oh, I should kick the face. God, she's a better <laughs> soccer player than me. I'm going to slide tackle the face, so I'm actually kind of coming Damn. up like, you know what? I'll do fucking cleats up. A dirty slide oh, tackle. Shit. Oh, shit. Wow. Red card. A dirty Instant slide tackle card. to the face. So I, essentially, I'm hitting her with the bottom of my shoe. Okay, so that'll do another D4 damage. Three. Okay, three. You feel the baby's skull compress as your heel <laughs> punctures into it. But then you feel like the baby skull like reforming itself like oh, around no. your foot and you feel something wet and warm as its mouth gets like a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and it starts to encircle your heel and then the rest of your foot is and it's like trying to like swallow your foothold or at least get your entire foot in its mouth. Wow, it really just has to have him the Beth's character. <laughs> what? Oh no, I didn't think about Wait, it that way. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Let's do any feed it. stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, Normal, would you like to do anything? Normal removes the big Jimmy Neutron head and wants to bring it down with thunderous force onto the baby such that I kind of like disconnect your guys' feet from it and trap yeah. it under the helmet. Okay. I feel like we're like trying, trying to, to pull away. Yeah, you guys anyway, are trying to pull too. away. I'm trying to break the connection and trap it under the helmet. I have okay. to say, the idea that you put that mask back on <laughs> after throwing, throwing up, up in it. I cleaned it out. Okay. What? With paper towels with and no soap or water. paper towels and a little bit of spit. <laughs> oh, oh, God. That smells really good after a while. There was a, a Diet Coke in the limousine, no. and I poured that in there and used it to scrub it. Okay, so give me a... Uh, I feel like that's kind of sleight of hand to very specifically get him. I got a nine. Okay, so he'll roll opposed. You got a two. Ooh! Nice. Stupid baby. Stupid, stupid so you stupid can't baby. roll fucking Fuck dice. Baby. So yeah. you trap this Fuck baby. So a, baby. And it spits out Scary's foot as it sees that coming in and goes... <laughs> it's like that one guy in the pod race before he explodes. Um, <laughs> you, you, you bring the, the mascot helmet down and trap the baby inside for a second. You suddenly hear a voice over the radio say, get inside, get inside. And the doors snap open and then they shatter. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the broken glass and I look over and be like, I've opened the door. Get on inside, everyone. I run, but because I'm not leaving this mascot helmet line, I do pick the mascot helmet back up as okay. I run. Then it tries to chase. Well, I guess it chases after you. I feel like maybe I pick it up and like there's no baby on the ground because it's <laughs> like splinter cell on the inside and I haven't no. noticed yet. That's funny. Good news, guys. The baby disappeared. <laughs> and then I put the helmet back on. And then you hear breathing above you in that helmet <laughs> and your eyes slowly move up and you see the baby spread eagle with its arms and legs like keeping itself suspended at the very top of the thing and it's looking at you with very big eyes and then it drops onto your head and starts like clawing at your face ah, oh, ah, God. Ah, ah, normal lose that I, fucking I di- mask yeah, I dive and try to take the mask off alright give me a dexterity roll or something that's a 22 you get the mask off easily and it's just the baby is just clawing on uh, normal's face it smells like vomit so I also I punt the mask over the fence <laughs> <No>! <laughs> roll a d20 protect check. the mask <laughs> Oh my god. A strength roll? Yeah, strength check. Yeah, That's so a you 15. Kick it yeah, you kick it over the fence. <laughs> and then I'm going to wind up my big heavy go bag and then uh, try and hit the baby off of normal's, off of head. normal's head. Okay, roll dexterity to see if you hit the baby and not normal. <laughs> 10. Okay, so with the 10, you hit normal in the temple and it, it doesn't actually hit the baby at all. I think it's both. Probably both. Ten yeah, I guess it hits both, but like... Does he have to roll for damage the against my bad, head? Freddy. Like, that's bad, Freddy. That's bad. Shut up, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. roll a d4. That's how much damage normal takes. One damage. Oh, oh geez. Ah. Uh, not quite what I planned, but uh, come on. Let's get inside. So as you're running into this building down like carpeted hallways, a woman appears in front of you in the hallway and says, down, and takes out a blue marble from her coat pocket and throws it. And it hits the ground, explodes, and a blue acrid smoke fills the air. 
The baby growls, grabbing at its eyes, gnashing at the empty air. It lets go of your head, normal, and it starts swinging around blindly, trying to grab each of you. And she goes, kids, come with me if you ah, want to not die. Come on, ah, come on. Ah, what? Ah, there's a baby. There, yeah, I know, I know, I know. You just need to follow me. Come on, follow me. So she leads you to an elevator and ushers you all in and then uh, presses a button. She says, I am Chief May Hales of Daddies. And that name was sent in to us by May Hales. So thank you for your name, May. And when the elevator doors open, you are not where you were before. I guess that's how elevators work. But like, <laughs> no, wait, this, they were, wait, this elevator brought us to a different place. This magic room took us to a different room. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yes. Guys, so where is I the don't know where we are. The wait a minute. Lady, what's going on here? We were just in a place, and now we're in a different place. Wait, wait. Canonically, it's the first time any of your characters have used an elevator. Link stays in the elevator. What? Link stays in the elevator, and he presses the door <laughs> closed. And like, he's like, wait, I can't do that. I can't. I can't. <laughs> he presses the door open and, and he's the, in the same and room. the same room because nobody pressed any he's buttons like, for floors. <laughs> after the sky turned red, knowledge of elevators vanished from the Specifically earth. that, everybody lost, yeah. Um, so they, this is the only elevator in the world. Wait, is it that knowledge of them or they actually, ex- like, it's like every time All we see an elevator, we forget. disappeared for- and yeah. everyone forgot what they were. There okay. was like, yeah. why are these shafts in the middle of buildings? We don't understand. Okay. Yeah, it's just a distraction. We just build another stairwell here. Why do they have closets that are kind of bouncy? <laughs> that's weird. She goes, this is, a, this is a room that goes up and down and leads to other rooms. That's that's maybe the least interesting thing you'll learn while you're here. Normal Whoa. throws up again. No more stairs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I should have predicted you wouldn't oh be ready God. for that. I forgot about the elevator thing. I forgot. God, nobody knows about elevators in this world anymore. That's like what we call him. it. An up down room. <laughs> Nobody knows about up-down rooms anymore. So basically on the ground floor, it was all carpeted and corporate and there were like pictures of like flowers and playing like future Phil Collins music. And as you future went- Future Phil Collins? And I feel like the moment the elevator started, but we all like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck's going on? <laughs> 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 she goes, oh, I'm sorry, this room moves. This room- <laughs> Why would it move, lady? That doesn't make any sense. It moves up, you know, like stairs, you know how stairs work? Yeah. yeah. What, if, what if you didn't stairs have to take move, every though. individual stairs? <laughs> I know, but you, what if you moved instead of the stair? Wait, no, yeah, the stairs don't move. So so the stairs move instead of you. You know, like stairs, it's like you're moving, right? But this, it's like I'm subject to the whims of the up-down room. A room that reflects my moods up, down, and sometimes just staying still. Right, you got a, a handle on this very quickly. But yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, that's what this is. She takes you out of there, and as you enter the new floor, the walls are suddenly very austere and white. Like your mom. <laughs> <laughs> my dad. <No. laughs> My mom is short and brown. <laughs> Lincoln has pulled out a penny and he's like really looking straight down that little gap between the elevator and the floor. Oh. And he's like staring at us like, how far down does this go? And he drops a penny down there. They have cash in the future. They do not. <laughs> they drop a paper clip. Okay. He drops his cash app card. Yeah. I drop my cash app down there. So for. I drop my cash app down there. So you, so you stand there waiting to hear the plink as it hits the bottom of the elevator and you keep waiting for about 30, 45 seconds. Seconds. So she's like, we need to, we need to start walking. So it's just a carpet down there. So <laughs> <laughs> and then as you, as you leave the elevator here, ding. Oh my god, it's a very long way down. Every time you take a step, you can feel it echo throughout this hallway, this like very blank hallway. And she goes, "This is the Department for the Acquisition, Destruction, Deployment, and Investigation of Extra Normal Stuff, Daddies for short." <laughs> and she Wait, starts. Oh, that's that's what the acronym was on the front of the building. Yeah, this, this is that. This is that building. <laughs> it's the same building. This is this is us. But we weren't in the same building. We walked in so that again, room. So again, the up-down room <laughs> takes you from a room oh, and then moves saying. down I or saying. up that to is a different weird. room. The rooms are stacked on top of one. It's so just you're stairs. saying we're below the building that we were in before. Yes, With the correct. same name so as what you said. So are we in China now? No, it's the same building. It's not that <laughs> far down. Why is everything upside down? Uh, it's, uh, you know what? Just imagine. It's not the up-down room. It's the stairs room. And then he grabs the lady and shakes her and he goes like, then why didn't we take the stairs? Are there stairs? There are stairs. Can we just verify no that we're in the same this room? I'm going to freak out. She, uh, I'd like to verify that we're in the same building. Fine. Follow me. And she takes you the opposite direction to the direction she was <laughs> Go going. And she goes, okay, we're following the fire exit signs. And she goes, stairs. All right, cool. Watch me. And then she opens up the door and then walks up the stairs. and goes, follow me. Come on. Yeah. And leads you yeah. up back to the room you were initially in. And she goes, okay. Why did we so just this, do this the first time? Because so much easier. Here, we'll, I'm, never we'll do it again no, I'm not down. going in that room again. No, no, we'll do it again. I'll show you how much I'm easier it is. I'm going down We're the stairs. I'm going down the stairs, lady. <laughs> okay, well, I'll meet you down there and I'll show you it's safe. I don't so, care. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Okay, so she I goes and she goes the, the moment elevator. she's gone. The moment she's gone, got Taylor you. looks at the teens <laughs> and goes, this is our chance to get deeper into this place. So, Taylor. 
So there's 69 buttons <laughs> in the elevator, and there's 69 flights of stairs. No, no, she's taking, yeah, so she's taking, so she's taking the, the elevator. So she's but you see a fire escape much. sign uh, on the wall that mentions there are 69 flights of stairs here nice. uh, going downward. So we're already on the top. All so right. you're at the top. We gotta go to the 69th floor and get that cash out back. <laughs> So based on the number of stairs that we just walked up, how many floors down was the floor we were originally on? You're on floor 3B as in like basement, underground floors. 3B. I mean, I walk down. I go down the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They can't stop us, guys. We can check out what all did, the other what rooms. What did Scary do? Scary stayed in the elevator. She yeah, thought it was I think really cool. Took the elevator yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you guys go down to floor 3. And when the door's open, you don't see Yeah, I was going to say, the door's open and she stands outside and she goes, and now we just have to wait for your friends to come out of the stairwell, they Come are on, not. Link, they're not go. coming out of the stairwell. You, you can right? hear it echoing from the door. You're like, let's keep going. Just clear. I was just trying to run back to her. I just refused to use the elevator. That's all. Oh, so you exited on the floor. Yeah, I exited oh, on okay. her floor. <sighs> okay. <sighs> yeah. And she goes, okay. okay, you wait there. And yeah, she don't runs ever down. put me in that thing again. It's like an airplane, but in a building. Hate it. <laughs> it's, okay, we'll wait just, here. We're fine. Yeah, we'll no, wait here. Can you please? Yes, please do. Taylor, you run down the stairs and you hear huff, 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 <laughs> two men in suits coming up. And I'm going to bust down the door that whatever that floor. Okay, that so you'll be so on like floor. somewhere between floor three and floor 20, right? Floor, floor 20. 20. Yeah. Floor 20. Um, so, yeah, let's say you made it down five I'll roll flights a of stairs. I'll roll D20. Yeah, far yeah go ahead. That? 11. Okay, so you're on floor 11 when you see two men in suits rushing up from the stairwell. I guess this will be as good as any. I really hope that Freddy dies this <laughs> <laughs> So you kick open the door, and before you, you see a room that is so big that you have trouble conceiving of it for a second. It seems so large and so cavernous, and as you look up, you see a spiraling trail that leads down the cave wall, almost like a drill bit kind of thing. Like, like the like room in Encanto. Yes. Actually, yeah. Yes, like that. <laughs> Just like the room in Encanto. And it, it, and it goes along the edge of this cave. Every so often along this wall, you see a door that is locked from somewhere. And you just came out of one of these doors. And to your left and your right are doors that have, one has a golden lock on it, one has a silver lock. And the trail continues down deeper and deeper and deeper. And you can't see the bottom. It just gets dark before you can fully reach the bottom. We cut back to for just like this blank hallway with teenagers just hanging out. Normal has drawn what he thinks is the layout of how an elevator works on the wall. <laughs> and it's like, I think it goes like that. And it's completely wrong. It's like a car going upstairs. <laughs> it's like yes, a roof-shaped okay. car it's going room upstairs. Going up and downstairs. I think that's an elevator. When you said that like an airplane is like an elevator is like an airplane, a building inside, like airplanes are like kind of buildings, aren't they? Yeah, an airplane is really just a building with wings, Link. Yeah, well, I don't, Okay, why are you coming at me? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut back to Taylor Swift. So you see all this, you see these doors. There's one next to you that has four jeweled locks on it that draws your attention. And you feel deep in your heart, something powerful is in here that I can use. I so pull out my ninja rocks and okay. I throw it at the jewels on the door. Okay, it doesn't do anything. Shit, there goes one of my ninja rocks. Uh, uh, but to your right, <laughs> pick it up. that's to your left. I pick it up, I pick yeah, up my you just pick it back up, that's fine. <laughs> to your right is a door with a copper lock on it. You almost feel like this whisper of like, hey, hey man, there's something good in here for you. Come on, just pick the lock. I'm gonna look at it and then forgetting that I'm being chased, I'm gonna try and like kind of tug on the, on the lock and see if I can shim the lock using any number of improvised tools in my go bag. Okay, give me a slide hand roll. Uh, 13. So with a 13, you try to lock pick this door, you shim it and the lock pops open, but then you feel something from within the lock react poorly to your attempts to open it. Okay, I'm scared now because what Anthony has Whoa. reached next to him out? What? and he has a this bunch of index cards. This is such a power cards. move because he was all like, oh no, I didn't even plan for you to go in this room. Oh no. And he's got fucking stuff for it. Jeez Louise. So just to paint the picture, folks, Anthony has three stacks of colored index cards. I'm drawing one now from the pink stack. Curse. Voiceover narration. You think out loud for the entirety of the next adventure. Oh, no. So uh, oh, as you no. open this door, though, you also inside what seems to be a small green humanoid person who what? in one hand is beckoning you forward and in the other hand is holding what looks like a phone. Um, and what the fuck? He goes, hey, come here, come here, help, help, help me out, and I'll give you this. Come here, come here. What kind and of you, phone? It looks like an iPhone 20. That's 10 iPhones ago. Yeah, no, it's kind of old for your it eyes. It pretty much looks just like the iPhone Yeah, right it looks now. like the iPhone like like Slightly, there's 12 <laughs> camera lenses on the back. I'm like, whoa, it's like a mini Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z. 
Uh, sure, yeah, whatever, man, whatever. Come on, come here. Yeah, yeah, help me out of here. I can't just grab me by the hand and then walk me out of here. Come on. What's your deal, Piccolo? Uh, they put me in prison for it's bullshit funny reasons. Because, you know, Piccolo is like a small flute. Who are you're you already to? myself. This is my voiceover narration. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is my head. You, this is what you, you're hearing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what you're saying. I'm like, saying it's funny Why because a Piccolo is already a small flute. Yeah, just but get this, me out of here. Just take me, my hand and lead me out of this room. That's all I need. I don't know. What's in it for me? This, this is the four seconds of fame. It's an item that allows you to record four seconds of audio or video. Those four seconds will then immediately show up on the social media feeds of every human being on planet Earth. Oh my God, what? And I know this? That's what he tells I me. I grab his hand so fucking hard, bro. <laughs> okay, so you lead him out of the jail cell and he goes, yippee, I'm free. And he hands you the four seconds of fame. So now I'm giving you this card. <laughs> I've gotten a yellow card here. And as he says that, the woman who uh, you met Kills and then him. the two armed men <laughs> bursting through the door behind you and they go, no, no. And, uh, <laughs> and he goes, yes, yes. And he, he snaps his fingers and he vanishes entirely. Uh, and they go, oh no. As they're doing that, oh, I quietly God. hide the phone from them. <laughs> Just take a video of this cave and put it online. And I turn it on, I turn it around and I record myself selfie mode in this room. And I go, <laughs> what up Taylor stands? If I disappear. One, one, two, one. <laughs> Are you counting? Yeah, you down? Me four okay, seconds. Okay, okay. okay. Say, right. say. What's up, Taylor One, Stans? Two. It's your boy Taylor Swift here. They've gotten me in some government. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So immediately, the push notification. Yeah, you like, push you notification. And it's got a full thumbnail and everything. It's me, like with my hands. Like, well, you can oh. do audio or video. So I'm assuming you did video. Video. Oh, so you did video. Oh, so no, you no, just audio, see, you right. see. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see. You hear nothing. You just see his face <laughs> against a wall. <laughs> it's on my YouTube channel, which all of a sudden has a bunch of people watching it. Yeah, yeah, all of a sudden you get 8 billion no audio. views, but no, but no audio. audio. Wow. Wait, does this break? Because at the bottom it says break roll 15 charisma. So the way that these magic items work that I've made is that you can use them as much as you want, but after you use them, they have the chance to break. So because that's a charisma item, you're going to roll a d20 and add your charisma modifier. If you don't get higher than its break number, which in this case is 15, it breaks okay, forever, I'm and you have to rip up the card. It's a 12, so that's done. So then, goodbye to that cool oh, card. Oh. <laughs> I'm tearing it up. All right. So the woman takes you all into her office and she sits you down in four seats that she has assembled. Well, three seats that she's assembled and then she brings another one in for Taylor. Taylor's already in one of the seats. He's in the center most facing and he's already kicked back. The main character seat? Yeah, the main character seat. Okay. Well, he, she, Lincoln she, is, uh, just stands in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, that's fine. It's time to talk to you about the reason that you're here. We are at war with an enemy who has already won. Oh, well, then, well, then what's we, the point? What, what, yeah. what are we doing here? Let me keep, can I keep going? I didn't okay. come here just to say one oh. sentence. Let me, I have a thing. Oh, oh there's, there's got something, thing, everyone. You know what? I've got a whole, this will explain, you know what? I'm not going to bother. I'll, this will explain it. And she takes out a video cart with a TV on it, like the kind in school that meant you were going to watch Magic School Bus instead. We're going to watch Magic School Bus? You're not going to watch Magic School Bus. And she presses play on it. That show got dark after the red <laughs> shift happened. And, you know, oh, the, the, man, the yeah. new seasons are weird. I still get nightmares, bro. The one where she goes inside the kid's repressed trauma, that was a dark one. That was awful. Oh, God. People said it was like the best episode of the show. And the well, swimming I pool, I like, freaked it. out. And that dog died. Can I press play on the DVD player? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So she presses play on a DVD player. An old mustachioed man with white hair appears on screen. None of you recognize him. Is and he then... hot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anthony, is he hot? He has... Uh, no. Okay. He was not hot when he was young, and he's not one of those that breaks late. Whatever. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ron Stampler. Welcome to Daddy's, the Department for the Acquisition, Destruction, Deployment, and Investigation of Extra Normal Stuff. A Ron Stampler business enterprise. If you're watching this, then we failed. The doodler is still loose in our reality, and we're too old or too dead to continue to fight against it and its, uh, homies, its accolades, if you will. <clears throat> this video is to remind you that you're not crazy. The world really is broken, but it can be fixed. Uh, now that said, please don't involve our sons. Uh, especially my son, Terry Jr. I mean, I, I guess I care about the other sons too. Uh, they'll want to join daddies, but keep them out. They shouldn't be responsible for our, our mess here. The video feed cuts and is suddenly replaced with the image of Normal's uncle, Lark Oak. Does someone, <gasps> someone, someone write over this DVD? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> 
He says, If you're watching this, then we failed too. We're dead or missing, and the doodler is still <gasps> loose. Wait. I wish I had a great plan for you, a hundred contingencies, but I've only got three things to tell you. Firstly, if all is lost, implement code purple. It worked once before, maybe it can work again, you just may not like what you find. Secondly, stay away from the obsidian door. Thirdly, no matter what happens, do not involve our children. Normal, Link, Taylor, they shouldn't be responsible for our mess. And the video cuts out. Okay. So now that that's done, what the fuck is going on? You're, you're the bosses now. All of you are what? the joint chiefs of, of, of daddies. So this is your office now. Congratulations. You're my boss now. Tell me what to do. What do we do? What do you mean? Wait, okay, first things first, lady. What the heck? Like the video said, this is the Department for the Acquisition, Destruction, Deployment, Investigation of Extra Normal Stuff, or daddies, and your dads what? ran it. They were the chief what? agents. My dad didn't run a super... You got me confused. Sorry, your, your you dad and your uncle. You got me confused with another normal oak. My dad ran a shitty vegan ice cream store. This is it. This is crazy. You saw him in the video. Well, your uncle, but <gasps> your dad and your no, uncle worked together uh, on this. My dad's a librarian and an author. He wrote one book and he's a librarian. Your and dad he, is and he a sniper. Li- <laughs> I've seen your dad kill he's monsters great. No, with a he's gun. a good striker on FIFA. He's a, what are you okay, talking about? Well, my stepdad is like a total moron and like an idiot and then embarrassing. Embarrassing, maybe. <laughs> the other two, not so much. I mean, that your dad's, I mean, not you, she says, pointing at Taylor. I don't know. Again, yeah, I don't know, I don't know who my dad is. <laughs> she, she grimaces. But she goes, no, your, your <laughs> dad's and in one case, uncle wanted to protect you from the knowledge of what's going on. Like, you don't remember this, but I do because I'm in my 30s. Oh, God, I feel old. But like, I, <laughs> w- when I was like five, all the sky changed from blue to red. Everything went fucking weird. And that's because your dad like accidentally unleashed this weird chaos creature, this god Whoa. called the Doodler. Our dads turned the sky red? Indirectly, kind of, yeah. Everybody thought that the world was ending for a while and everything seemed insane. But after a while, it seemed like, oh, actually, all that really changed was that the sky was turned to this weird color. Except people in the know, people like me, she says, pointing at herself manically. I was on the internet all the time and I saw there were way more cryptid sightings. There were way more missing persons. The conspiracy theories were going nuts and I knew something was going on. And that's why your dads hired me to work for them because I'm a fucking go-getter and I saw beyond the veil. I saw that something's fucking weird now. So (laughs) They uh, recruited me from 8chan. (laughs) (laughs) They were protected this town from incursions by acolytes of the doodler like every so often there will be an incursion and something will happen and the doodlers like acolytes or people who are obsessed with the doodler or maybe the doodler themselves I don't really know but something weird will show up and start fucking up people and trying to eat them or destroy them or whatever the hell and they were the ones who stopped them and if you don't stop them then they're going to take over the town and eventually the world so they were basically keeping the world all together but they're gone now but you're the best thing I have so now you have to do their job I'm sorry I raise my hand yes Lincoln uh, here's the problem I, I, I'm having. Maybe you can help me. One, you're an adult. So that means I should probably trust you and, and you're probably smarter than me. So that's good. But, <laughs> but two, you're saying that in order for this to be true, my dad would have to lie. And my dad has never lied to me his entire life. So you see the predicament? Like, that's oh, not possible. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. So, like, like, no, Lincoln, hey, I get it, man. Like, yeah. yeah. What did your dad tell you about Santa? Oh, the first memory I have of Santa Claus is he sat me down and he explained to me that Santa is not physically real but could be real and then it was kind of up to my choice to decide whether or not like i want to believe it in they'd support my decision either way well shit that, that i just want fifa on me. so no, i didn't great. really care you haven't told us i mean so where's our i, Look, I need lady, to say my dad where's, where's i also don't know where your dad father? is wait is my dad part of this the video mentioned me that's true the video did say something about taylor oh yeah it did and you're taylor yeah and you don't have a dad well i mean obviously i have a cool dad i just don't know where he is oh I don't know. I mean, maybe by researching the stuff going on with the doodler and all that stuff, you'll find your dad. I don't know. I got hired relatively so you're recently. we got to do a bunch of work and then maybe we'll be the ones to save the world. I'm saying the saving the world is the work. <laughs> she says, first, you're going to need these. And she hands each of you a badge with your name and a picture of you on it. And she says, at any time, those badges you have around your neck, they might vibrate. And that'll let you know that there's been an incursion and that you have to basically drop everything and stop it because if the doodler gets enough of a, a presence in this world or does enough fucked up shit, then a lot of people die. I mean, we're just kids, so how about we just don't do it? How about we go to the cops to find our dads? And there's got to be like grown ups that do this stuff, right? There like, were, they were your dads. That was your dad. There was just our four dads. And your you dads had the power. Bunker? Have, have your dads ever told you anything about daddy magic? No, my dad is totally lame. I just can't wrap my mind around the fact that the dude who is like, 
weeping at like top six Steph Curry plays. Like he was like this really old NBA player, but he was able to play into his eighties because of some <laughs> sort of <laughs> fuck me. Um, anyways. Uh, and then he made all that money from that golf show. He's a miniature golf guy, right? Yeah. He made, he oh, plays man. miniature golf and then curling and cornhole. So like he was a big member of the national cornhole federation. Anyways. Yeah. Um, the NCF. So you're telling me that same guy, Terry, is also like into all this like metal monster stuff? Yes. Don't threaten me with respecting my stepdad, okay? <laughs> okay? I Okay, fine. Our dads are adults, but there's other adults. Like, why don't we just go, like, Sheriff Johnson? Like, he's an adult. He, he's you better than we are. You know the name of this sheriff? Yeah, he's a really nice guy. What do you mean? You guys don't do any <laughs> like, work around the community? This is a town of, like, 50,000 people. I mean, good for you being involved yeah. in local politics, I guess. No, I don't know the name you know, of our state senator. Our, you know, if you know the name the of the sheriff, it's because he's definitely done something illegal. <laughs> Sa- no, Saturday, Saturdays when we go clean up the park and the rivers. You guys don't do that? The reason you clean up the Nark, Nark. Okay, whatever. Scary. My point is, like, there's other adults that could do this. It's not we about adult. adults or not adults. It's about do they have the daddy magic? So your parents, if they didn't teach you about the doodly, they didn't teach you about daddy magic. But there's some magical energy that they have that's powered by I don't know love or like affection for your kid or your dad or whatever the fuck, and that allowed them <laughs> uh, to uh, uh, boring. Way. I don't like it either. Oh, I don't that's care. So sweet. Oh, I mean, but my they, dad's probably the most powerful dad. Oh god, shut up. <laughs> the, so <laughs> hey, they could tell when an incursion happened, and they could tell where it was. Like there was no technology other than just what was in their souls or hearts, I guess. And like, because you're their kids and because they all love you. And I guess also you, Taylor, I don't know, maybe your dad loves you somewhere, wherever he is. But like, maybe you'll know too when an incursion happens. Well, Miss Hales, I saw Spooky Vision. I'm pretty sure my dad's in trouble. It sounds like this is related to that. So just point me where I gotta go and we'll do it. We've got spirit. Yes, we do, as I like to say. So like, what do we do? Well, well this so, lady doesn't know anything. Well, so like, no, Blink, be quiet. Well, you gotta get, hey, it together, get it together, bro. Why are we even listening to you? My dad lied. That's like the only thing. Link Taylor slaps Link. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! If this is the only way I'll meet my dad, then dang it, I don't I'll know do where it. you're getting that. This might not relate to your dad at all. I don't think this has anything to do with your dad. I I really don't. But look, Link, it's crazy. There's a lot of stuff going on. That I'm ready. I'm ready. Put me in, coach. <laughs> Link, okay. Link, listen to me, man. Okay, let me try to fucking put this in soccer terms or something, right? Yeah. So it's like either you can like sit on the sidelines and cry about it or you can step up for your team and your dad and get into some really dark, angsty shit like the rest of us. Yeah, no, I want, I'm going to go on the field. I just, I might just be crying while I'm on the field. <laughs> well, then, <laughs> oh, well, okay, fine. this is fine. You can cry. Yeah. Just, okay. Okay, so first thing we need to do probably is go to the pay window. Follow me. So the room you enter is pretty much entirely empty, except for the fact that there's a very large puddle on the other end of the room. And for some reason, that's where your eyes go to first. Then as you raise your eyes to see what caused that puddle, you see a large wall that seems to be made entirely of raw meat that has a large hole in the middle that you with horror realize is a mouth and that there's Ugh. saliva dripping from that mouth over sharp teeth with uh, chapped lips and a big old tongue comes out oh. and licks the floor and licks its lips and stuff and it goes mmm, mmm, mmm. oh my god it's face from Nick Jr. <laughs> oh, no. oh no yeah Nick Jr. the rat turned into that <laughs> oh my god yeah. what yeah that's right Nick oh, Jr. the rat Squeak. his face alone survived and it turned into that wall and it goes oh Oh, oh, God. Oh, new meat, new meat. You will need this. Blah. Four pieces of paper come out, and uh, Agent Hales says, so we're at war, this is daddy's, and for some reason, in order to actually get any equipment, we have to buy it from the vending machine downstairs, and what? it only Why? accepts these dollars. I don't know, I don't know. I started working here like two years ago. I don't know, I'm still getting the hang of it. Two years is a long time to get it. a long time. Yeah. Do you have any idea how much the average high schooler has to learn in two years, lady? Like, I that... Falling on deaf ears, I know frankly. About I was an assistant. One, I, I learned a lot two, about like the work that they three. don't do, and I learned how to like get away with doing as little work as possible. Only- I don't oh. understand why things work. Yeah, it was me and just those four guys, and they would leave, and I would just stay here and like play whatever the future equivalent of Candy Crush is on my phone. I no, I get Maybe it. Maybe you could have been yeah, learning whatever. during that time. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> You're my least favorite one. <laughs> yeah, well. So anyway, these are daddy warbucks. You need to hold on to these. And I've made physical versions of these that I'm going to give you now. So we got to keep track of stuff? Yes, you can now keep track. You, you, the players in real life, will keep track of the stuff you have. Now we're going to go downstairs. And I'm going to take you to the vending machine where there's like stuff that you can use for your, I guess, missions. Okay, follow me. 
Agent Hales takes you downstairs to a massive warehouse-like space. It is brightly lit, but from lights you can't see, it's like somebody turned on the Fulbright on a, in a level designer. That's for nobody. That's for people who don't <laughs> it. It's like it's like a big light box. It's like a yeah, thank it's you. Like somehow like the walls are just yeah. Can you the describe the level of anti-aliasing light. going on? Is there z-buffering the, happening? The bow is turned all the way up. Is there fong shading? There's this very big, very brightly lit empty warehouse, and in the middle of it is just a normal-sized snack vending machine. Um, oh my god! Hey, normal. That vending machine's exactly your size. Fuck you! <laughs> Cut that out. No, nope. that's good. That's no. going in. No. Nope. As you approach the vending machine, you actually see that, like, oh, it's not really normal size. It's just kind of like far away, and it's actually quite big. And uh, looking at the vending machine, <laughs> Anthony, the way you pay that's attention. how perspective that works right now. <laughs> I know I'm explaining very basic human experiences just to you. Just kidding. That one is way too big. <laughs> there are a bunch of things that you can buy from this. There are brass, silver, and gold keys. There's also jeweled keys that seem to be pretty expensive. There are healing potions. There are weapons and armor. And there is a lockpick on the very bottom that seems to cost a lot. They all have different Daddy Warbuck amounts they take that I have put into our My Discord. My God. Okay, which one of these find... Help us find our dads. Like, yeah, what is are there we... like a dad detector yeah, what is, in like, here? What is this? Like... So these keys down. There's a dungeon beneath us, full of both like monsters that they, your dads have captured, and also like potentially useful items that they've captured. Sometimes both in the same room. And huh. those keys will open doors that lead to those things. That's where I was. Yes, that's exactly what you did. Actually, you picked a lock instead of using a key. But if you want to get into one of those rooms without getting a curse, you use a key. Uh... And as she says that, your badges all vibrate and come alive on your chest. You feel within you a surge of presumably what this woman referred to as daddy magic. You feel power well up within you and fill your entire body and each of you in this moment become the Dungeons and Dragons character archetypes that you built into your sheets. <laughs> oh, hey. Wow. You can feel wow. yourself gain spells Are or you abilities. Are you we have a mighty Morphin Power Rangers ass moment That's right so now? Wild. Yes. Uh, I would I would say Sailor Moon, but yeah. From our ID cards? Yeah, it's basically coming from your ID cards. Like you don't actually like turn into like a guy with armor and shit, but you can feel yourself get I whatever. I turn into a teenager who thinks he's a cleric. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like you can you can now, you know, use those spells that you uh, have on your character oh. sheets and stuff. Well, what is everybody? What are you, Scary? I'm a warlock. Oh. Ooh. So yeah, Scary, you feel the dark magic of a patron god that gives you your dark powers, and you feel that awaken within you, and you become Scary the Warlock. Ooh, can our ID cards, like, reflective, like, as you as it hits the light, it like literally says, like, Warlock? Like, that's, like, their code names for each other? Oh, Warlock? Yeah, that's That's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, it looks your like call sign. I'm a paladin? That's pretty cool. Yeah, so you feel a good and just light welling up within you, Link, that fills you with the desire to protect and heal and help people. And that, uh, that is the, the spirit just of a like paladin. Dad. Maybe you guys can call me pal, like short for paladin. Like, what's up, pal? I'm not doing that. Hey, pal. <laughs> I'll call you pal. Normal looks down at his badge and sees the word cleric on there. We blast into Normal's POV and a light pierces through the clouds of his soul and fills him with beautiful light. And it's the spirit. And it's the school spirit. And that's the spirit <laughs> that he worships that brings his mighty powers forth. Uh, and then Taylor looks down at his badge and he's like, oh, man, mine says Park Ranger. Oh, Ranger. Where did he get the park from? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a smudge. There was, a, there was some gravy. <laughs> so you feel within your soul the power of uh, uh, Aragorn. Yeah, Aragorn ass bullshit. You feel being <laughs> cool and the guy who's in the corner of the tavern in dark and you fucking have a hood over your head, like that whole fucking vibe, that shit, that's you. Kicking things, breaking toes, you know how it goes. You feel a ranger within you. And also, after that wave of magic and dopamine has passed, you feel peril, you sense it in the air. You feel that at the San Dimas Elementary School, something is awry. You have an image whoa, of uh, whoa, a child. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You see. You, <laughs> Thank you, Freddie. <laughs> I'm just trying to give a little bit. <laughs> of, you see an image of a child. Look, I look at Taylor. Was this like the vision you guys had? No, we didn't really. I didn't leave. make a dumb sound like that yeah, when doing? I had my vision. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was a dumb sounds cool. This is the vision you do have. So you sense <laughs> the <laughs> elementary school, and then you see a child who's wearing a shirt that has like something kids like on it on the shirt. And he's <laughs> like, Paw Patrol. It's like I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> like Paw, and Paw Patrol. The Paw Patrol reboot. The gritty Paw Patrol reboot. Yes. Paw Patrol Port of Call New Orleans. Yeah, there you go. Man. <laughs> um, Paw Patrol yeah. vending machines that are bigger than they first seem and kids yeah. with shirts. <laughs> Didn't you used to listen to that podcast, Dungeons and Daddies? <laughs> yeah, the world building really took a nosedive. <laughs> it was just too immersive. I felt like I couldn't extricate myself from the tapestry that they wove with their words. 
So a kid wearing a Paw Patrol a Port Call New Orleans shirt uh, <laughs> is crawling out. See, it's funny now that we've yeah, all done it's good. it. Uh, is crawling out of a building and he looks up and you can see on his face that all these wrinkles, like he's really, really old. He has the oh, body of a boy. child, but he looks like he's 80. Like the Kira boy. Exactly like the kid from the beginning oh, of the Kira. I literally like the have it written Akira. down. Akira. Like the kid from Akira. Oh my Akira. God. Um, <laughs> and then that... Whoosh, that dissipates, and Agent Hales goes, "What did you see? Did you see we it? Saw did it work?" Akira ass shit. It was like a kid, like a kindergartner, but like was really old and looked like sick and like dying. Ah, ah oh, okay, that's good. That's weird. That's bad. I mean, it's, so bad. Good? it's not good. It's not good. It's bad. It's bad. But it means that your ability to use daddy magic to locate weird doodler shit is working. So yeah, that's a that's an incursion. We have to like go. All solve I that. know is that the kids of San Dimas Elementary are the future kids of San Dimas High School. Which means they're as connected to the glory of our school as we are. So for future generations, for our school to prosper and also to, I guess, help get our dads back, we better get over there and see what's going on. So this is what my dad did all the time? Uh, yeah, not all the time, all the time. He, yeah, but he would go home and stuff. Oh, man. If you're going to go out in the field, you might need some stuff. I don't know. The only thing I need is this right here. I said that uh, Grant was an author, so he wrote one book as a librarian, and it's uh, it's How to Be a Good Teenage Boy. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. There appears to be a real so book here. The only thing I need is is this. And oh let me God. just, I know my dad wrote something about being brave, and it seems like we got to be brave right now. What does it say about bravery? Let's get pumped up here. It says, <laughs> oh, uh, it says you don't always have to be brave. <laughs> It's okay to ask for help. Your dad sounds like a total pussy. Um, okay, well, maybe really quick. So while we're doing this, first order of business as your boss, like help like search stuff about our dads while we go do this. And so hopefully when we come back, you got some more information. Okay, like, that's I can do that. That's, like, that's a great idea. Yeah, can yeah. you do that? Yeah, don't just sit around and Google mangas that haven't been translated yet Yeah, stop all playing day Candy Crush. And maybe play this games on your phone. That's the first order of business as the boss. I'm gonna. I mean, you can't stop me from playing games with for these teenagers. As your guys' boss, don't ever fucking talk to a woman that way. I'm sorry, scary. In May, you better fucking get to work. (laughs) Oh, ladies, listen, ladies. No, what? Actually, yeah, scary. I'm okay with you. Actually, I feel a little bit more comfortable if you're the. I don't want to be the boss. Is, oh, are I you guys cool with that? I don't want to be the boss. Scary's the boss. I'm the boss. I'm not, find my dad. Taylor's, no, Taylor's the not the boss. Taylor's I'm not the boss. The boss. I think it's I fine. Think. You're Taylor's all the, the boss. boss. Nobody gets to not be the boss. All four of you are the boss. So I slap the four daddy warbucks against the vending machine. And I say, give me the rowdiest, raddest bunch of keys this money will buy. Okay. Also, are there any like good snacks in this bad boy? Like, are there like... Yes, there is one Snickers bar. <laughs> how, how much is that? That one is uh, six Daddy Warbucks. Wow. Six Daddy Warbucks. Holy Warbucks. shit. So you put your four Daddy Warbucks against the vending machine, and rather than accepting them through the dollar slot, it just absorbs all four of them and spits out two brass keys. We can use these in the dungeon. Hey, team of teens, hands in the middle. Are you guys ready to do this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Fa- Let let's me just run. say real quick. Thanks, everybody, for gathering here. Today. Okay, we got to go. And- <laughs> I, Lincoln starts running okay. down the thing. Are you going to take the elevator or the stairs? Stairs. I'm not going on that thing. Okay, so then as you go down the stairs, the floor directly beneath this one, you feel an incredible intelligence on the other side of that door that is. Oh, I'm smart now. Si- no, not, you don't <laughs> You don't become intelligent. You feel, you sense an intelligence on the other side of that door. Um, Why am I on the other side of the door? There's a sign. On the do- you're not on the other side. Of the-, the intelligence on the other side. Of the- you're on this side. Of the- Clearly, you don't have the intelligence. There's a sign on the door uh, next to the door that says whale. And then there's, there's a du- sign that's saying dungeon that goes that has an arrow pointing down. So if you want to go to the dungeon, you keep going down. But there's also a hyper intelligent whale behind this door. Daryl. <laughs> I mean, Lincoln. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, is, I'm just cracking up with just, just a handwritten sign. It's not handwritten. handwritten. It's official looking. <laughs> That's even funnier for some reason. They're like, all right, we got to get this they sign went to Kinko's. printed. We got to get a nice sign printed that says <laughs> real. stuck between like, you gave me like the fire hose. You're like, run to the fire. Then as I'm running to the fire, you're like, by the way, there's a door that says whale on it. I'm just like, saying, I'm you like, said, I'm <laughs> setting up the space. I'm being consistent about the way the space is built out. Like, and like, I'm telling you that there's a psychic hyper a whale by him this door. Like, you don't like have sh- to talk to him. Like you just have to sh- fucking know he's there. It's Alan Rickman in Die Hard looking at like the list of names. <laughs> <laughs> he's whale. like, it's Bill Whale. Like, it, I shouldn't go talk to him, but like, it's also you explain that it's there. Do well, you okay, want to do I'll- something with the whale? <laughs> no, no. Let's move okay. on. Let's move on. So you open the door to the dungeon <laughs> from Dungeons and Daddy. You can't be bad at us. You told us there's I'm no trying whale. to move forward. <laughs> 
I'm trying to add momentum to this expository fire hose of information. You're the one who was like, stop the adventure to look at a whale I didn't say look at it. I said it was you there. You described it so alluringly. I would say it with me if I came back after the mission was yeah, done. I went, oh, by the way, there's a whale there you didn't notice? A, that would be obscene. It's a big building. I could have just taken a path not next to the No, window. there's only one stairwell up or down. So what do you want to do? You want to spend the keys? You want to go rescue the kids? What the fuck do you want to do? I think we use these keys and let's go save some kindergartners. Like, we got I two guess. keys yeah. and some old kindergartners. I say we blow these keys into some fucking hot locks. Yeah, let's do it. The dust in your smell is very, very old. She goes, yeah, this is Raiten's dungeon where we keep all of our uh, all of our weird shit. So yeah, go for it, kids. It's kind of like a storage space. Who wants to open the door? I'll do it. All right. So you are going to pick one of these cards and we'll see what's inside. And then... Uh, I'll roll to see if there's a a monster inside that room as well. This one. I rolled a two on my monster table, which means that the starved to death corpse of a lizard man is in there. You're saying lizard men are real. I'm I'm pretty unfazed by anything I'm seeing at this point. So I'm just going to take this this later. You guys want to just go in and get the thing and bring it out. I take the lizard man corpse. and I throw it off of the like, (laughs) oh my God, (laughs) I clear it out. All right. Uh, Yeah. You hear it clatter to the ground where it shatters. Um, (laughs) And uh, yeah. So what item did you find inside this room? Dust my hands and I go. It's called Die Another Day. You roll a d20 and find out how you die. You can't share the result with anyone. Lower rolls are worse, obviously. No matter what happens, the vision you see must come to pass, period. Nothing you do can alter what you see. What the fuck? That's a horrible... Put that away. Okay, let's just not use that. That's great. Let's don't use it. Wait, so you have to pick it up? Like, how does it work? Like, You you have to choose to use it. Oh, Damn. Okay. So what is this object? Like, what does it look like? It is a magic D20 that when you touch it, you can feel that this is what it does. That if you choose to roll it, it will show you how you die and will lock that death into fate what forever. What the fuck? Holy shit. I hate that. This is the I'm scariest very, thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I've very gently set it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you want to just leave it there? You're like, you don't have to roll. It. This seems like not a good thing to have, no, guys. No, it's not. But maybe we give it to somebody else or something. Like, maybe it's worth something. I mean, yeah, maybe we'll meet someone who wants to know how they're going to die. Let's Just wrap it up in, like, bubble I'll wrap or something. I'll put it in my go bag. So do you want to use your other key? Uh, you, yeah, yeah. yeah, I hope we get yeah. something more useful yeah, than that. Useful, yeah, that's right. useful. So, yeah, so just so you know, the brass keys, the ones that are cheapest, tend to be things like this that are, like, fucking, like, wild and weird that, like, are maybe you can find a clever way to use these, but they don't have an immediately obvious yeah. uh, use. The things that require silver keys are tactical. They are more useful, but less, like, they're not, like, direct violence. And then the well, things that require... Well, we should yeah, have well, known that earlier. We just have to save some kindergartners, I And guess. then the gold yeah. key will get you things things that are just straight up they're called violent items they will just do damage and hurt things and stuff i like that so you're gonna open another brass door and i'm gonna roll to see if there's a monster inside one okay normal uh this one looks good over here this door is giving me a good energy i feel good about this one 18 so inside there is a living ancient gold dragon oh cool there's a dragon in here wow oh my god Massive, you guys know massive that the, the chaparral dragon is the mascot over there. Guys, Link, take a look at this. Lincoln runs back up. Oh, like, he looks nice. Runs away. Is this a nice dragon? Uh, roll perception. I got a natural twenty. <laughs> so with a natural twenty, you can tell that all this dragon likes to do is protect treasure. It's friendly to anybody who's not coming after its treasure. And it can be easily swayed if you can give it something that it believes is more valuable than what it is protecting. Hey, dragon, you want to know how you die? (laughs) (laughs) Do that. Roll persuasion. 13. All right, I'll roll, I don't know, wisdom saving throw against it. It also got a 13. Damn. Um, Do you want double or nothing, so, dragon? Yeah. <laughs> so, how would I double or nothing knowing how I die? Lincoln, realizing this dragon is not dangerous, slowly peeks his head around the corner. I, I just don't even know why we need to persuade you. We were all arguing about which one of us should take it, because if you knew how you die, that's pretty great, because you would know. Let like, me ask you this. Be- Do you know someone else who would want to maybe know that? Because this dice freaks me out. Plus, think about how hilarious it would be if someone comes in here and tries to steal it from you, and then they roll it, and then they're going to get got killed by an ancient dragon for stealing their treasure. That's like a perfect ironic trap. That's. I feel like that's convincing enough. You don't have to roll again. You were right on the cusp. You tied. So that's good. So he goes, all right, give it over. And he takes the dice from you, and he hands <laughs> and we you. we all watch to see if the dragon roll it? rolls it. What? Are you going to roll it? Do I want to roll it? Oh, no. Just uh, I don't know. Maybe it's... We think. And he's going to roll a wisdom saving throw to see if it's something he wants to roll or not. So 10. Dead in the middle. 
<laughs> I right, could go either way. Right in the middle. I could go either way. I could maybe roll it. I could maybe not. Now it's a, it's going to be a 50-50. If it's evens, I'm going to roll it. If it's odds, I'm not going to roll it. I guess you don't have to decide right now. It's evens. I'm going to roll it. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Daddy's looking for old ages bets surrounded by his loved ones. Here we go. Here we go. Do gold dragons have big beds? And- oh, my. 16. <gasps> All right. So he sees something and he goes, nice. Pretty good. Damn. Pretty good. Well, okay, so can we have like whatever? Yes, here. Yeah, so here, here you go. And he hands you, what does he hand you? I got the ring of invisibility, but also blindness. A small <laughs> glass ring that when worn grants the wearer complete invisibility at the cost of complete blindness. Both effects remain active as long as the ring is worn and become inactive upon removal. Ooh, that's clever. It's by Eli Goldwag. Thanks, Eli. Wow. Looks like we're all ready to go. But like, you know, we, we need a ride. Yeah, sure. You can take the company van, I guess. Oh, none of us can drive. Or uh, can, can, you can you drive? drive? You can drive? Scary, can you drive? Like, legally? Yeah, I mean, of course. What other kind is there? I, illegally? Yes, I can drive. Okay. So, uh, Link, uh, you notice when you head out to the parking lot that your dad's van is <gasps> here. And as Scary presses the key fob, it lights up. So the company car is <sighs> essentially your dad's van. What? How oh, did you get to the airport? Kill me. It's a minivan. It's, just a, it's so safe. What are you talking about? It's got lots of room and there's snacks in the back. Yeah, well, a ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not where ships get laid. <laughs> what? Do you, okay, well, are you going to drive it? Yeah. Don't dent it. Okay, no, righty tighty. Let's see. Here. <laughs> All right. You guys like fucking metal, right? What type of van is it, Anthony? So, yeah, you see your dad's Nissan Quest. Uh, what, you want it black? What color do you want it? What, what color well, is your colors did Nissan the Quest? Nissan Quest come in? Yeah. That's the real question. Well, I mean, what, but this what, new one comes in. Yeah, what in color did it come in in 2040 or wherever we are? No, but it got discontinued. This is a classic oh. car. This is a classic. This is, a but... mint con- this is like the dad in Ferris Bueller's Day Off with his Ferrari that he oh. washes mm. with a diaper. Oh, like that. Definitely like Grant this car from scratch. Thing, Who yeah. you love? You love a van. A gross beige color is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> like champagne. It's like a Sand champagne. Stone. Yeah. So your, your dad's champagne Nissan uh, Quest. It's still got all the custom trim from 2016, including like a built-in PlayStation 3. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. We can play Killzone. <laughs> Because, yeah, this is a pre-self-driving car car as well. But also, like, out of character, like, how much has Scary driven? Probably not at all. At like, all? <laughs> <laughs> but I just rolled a 17. Yeah, yeah boy! Yeah. <laughs> you get there with really no problem. Yeah. 17 is better than I drive on a daily basis, and I'm an adult. <laughs> there's, you there's like, like a car, really... like, lurches, like, into the... <laughs> there's, like, a tense moment where, like, a red light, like, a cop stops next to us and, like, looks at us, and we all look at him, and the cop's, like, gives us a little... Like shrug and then just like drives off. Like, oh my god, that was so close, guys! Dude, we <laughs> almost got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> so you head to an elementary school. You head to the elementary school, uh, the San Dimas Elementary School. The exterior of the school seems to be pretty normal because it's Saturday. There are basically no cars in the parking lot, but you can hear activity within. So by normal, it looks like a school at six p.m. So it's like nobody's here. Yes, but you hear a uh, heavy breathing inside. You hear beeping. You hear a uh, bit of moaning. You hear the whirring of machinery and a rhythmic, like, stomping. Is there, are there any windows we can look at? Yeah, there's, like, you know how, like, in schools, they have those little, like, windows inset into the door? <laughs> you know, in schools, they have windows. <laughs> Lincoln will use his incredibly tall head. <laughs> hey, Link, what can you see up there? His tall body. So okay, so on the top of it to from the window. the angle you're at, you can see a very long line of kindergartners that is leading up to what looks like a opaque phone booth with a monitor attached to it that have so many wires coming and going from it that it hurts your eyes to even look at them. On the other end of the room, you can see something running on a treadmill at a blistering speed. The something is vaguely humanoid, but the more that you look at it, the less that humanoidness becomes vague and more it becomes just like incorrect. It, 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 at first blush looks like a person, but the more you look at it, the less person-like it looks. The veins on its neck are bulging. They're about to burst. Sweat drips down what you assume is her skin in waterfalls that splash the ground and with a hiss evaporate into the air. One of the veins in her forehead pulses bigger and bigger until it bursts, the open vein flapping in the air like an untended garden hose. Oh, God. Her tongue lashes up and lassos the end of the vein, guiding it into her mouth where she sucks Uh, fluid out of it, uh, uh, rehydrating herself as the vein slowly grows flaccid. What the fuck? She spits out the vein and the vein retreats back into her head, sliding in the forehead like under her forehead skin like a blanket. She breathes heavily, horrible breaths so bassy that you can feel them in your chest. You realize now that's what that moaning was, was her heavy, horrible, bassy breaths. 
If I um, print out this description, will you sign it for me? <laughs> <laughs> She's also, her, her fingers are tapping at three different sets of keyboards that are mounted to her treadmill, and the wires are trailing from those keyboards to the phone booth. Ghostly white. He goes, oh, there's, just a, there's just a teacher who's watching TV in there. We should probably, we should just go. All right, let's go in. All Come right, on. sounds good. All right, uh, yeah. No, there's just a teacher. There's the nobody in the, the, Oh, the, God, yeah. no, everybody. Okay, do you all go in? Yeah, yeah I just going. bust in. It's just a teacher. It's a safe adult. Okay. Uh, so, there's a monster. <laughs> so as you <laughs> open the door, I scream, there's a monster. As you step in, two things happen. A, Lincoln says there's a monster. B, you see all the things I just mentioned to Lincoln. Uh, and C, the doors slam shut behind you and are barred. There's a line of kindergartners leading towards this phone booth. And on the other end of the phone booth, there are a bunch of old people just sitting on the ground, just looking very tired and looking very sad. So the woman on the treadmill is looking at the monitor on the phone booth. And on the screen, you see an old woman who is huffing and puffing. She's running as fast as she can to what looks like a bank and cashes a check. And the teller goes, hey, congratulations, madam. Uh, your balance is now $1 million. And the old woman <laughs> looks into the camera as if she's being filmed. She goes, time. The woman on the treadmill presses a large red button on the treadmill and a number appears on a large electronic board that folds out from behind her. And it says 68 years, two months, three days, 12 hours, 34 seconds. And the, the woman, the runner, looks at this and she goes, okay, so that means you are in seventh place, subpar. You will remain this age. And she presses a button on one of her keyboards and the phone booth spits out the old woman that you saw on the monitor. The old woman goes and sits down with a bunch of other old people that also look like kindergartners. And the runner, she goes, you're gonna sit there until this entire marathon is over. Now, who else wants to speed run life to see who gets a million dollars quicker than anyone else? All our days whisked away But is there something more to say? You know that no one knows us better than ourselves Used to tell myself it'll be alright Pretty lies let me sleep at night I know that no one knows me better than myself And I know I'll get this right it's just a matter of time till we make it out alive. We gotta pick ourselves up and say, not today, no, not today. We live for tomorrow, make steel and borrow, break where we can't change. We gotta pick ourselves up and say, not today, no, not today. I don't need Come back tomorrow, I'll be on my way I'll be on my way Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Lincoln Wilson, Anthony Birch as our DM, Will Campos as Normal Oak, Beth May as Scary Marlowe, and myself, Freddie Wong, as Taylor Swift. The theme song is On My Way by Maxton Waller, and there's a full version available on his Bandcamp. Take a look at the episode description for a link. It's pay what you want. Brian Fernandez is our content producer. Ashley Nicolette is our community manager. Esther Ellis is our lead editor. Travis Reeves provides additional editing. Robin Rapp is our transcriber. Special thanks this week to our patrons Eli Goldwag and May Hales for providing names for characters and items. This show is supported by a Patreon full of cool cats. Folks like Nicholas Smith, Dylan Gerald, Gigaro, Derek Robinson, Logical Nonsense, Not Blue Falcon, James Donaldson, Alex, Levi Gillikin, Lizette Delgado, Wyatt Vercher, Howard Shapiro, Harlan Sinclair, Morgan Troop, Harrison Hapner, Calvin Chavez, Daria Cochis, Brian Moreno, Grant Bowering, and Jerry Kahn. If you want to support the show, the best way to do it is to join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. There's tons of bonus content. We do an after show where we talk about each episode the week after release. We have a Discord where we do live listens. There's bonus video. There's bonus audio. There's bonus multimedia, including two standalone one-shot series in the Call of Cthulhu and the Star Wars RPG system. We also just hit a Patreon stretch goal, so we'll be doing a cutthroat Regency adventure mini series featuring four eligible bachelorettes who must use their wits to attract a worthy husband before their rivals do, called Sons and Sons Ability. That Patreon stretch goal will be available to every patron at every level, so head on over to Patreon 
patreon.com slash dungeons and dads to learn more. Our website is dungeonsanddaddies.com. Our store is store.dungeonsanddaddies.com. There's a bunch of new merch in there if you haven't checked it out in a while. Twitter is at Dungeons and Dads. Subreddit is Dungeons and Daddies. Welcome everyone to season two. Our next episode comes out Tuesday, February 8th. We do new episodes every other week. And by the way, the off weeks are where all the Patreon content goes. Just saying. Thanks for listening and we'll see you in two weeks. We got a pick We don't have to talk about it. Great. That's what my diary's for. Not that anybody's allowed to read it, but if they ever did, oh, what they'd find. What would what would we find? Well, it's like a, fanfic? No.